all he's most famous for Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Uh, in I, I had an uh, I was English major and had quite a few courses on Anglo-Saxon literature. Uh, he's actually the most important uh, sci scientist when it comes Anglo to Anglo-Saxon literature of the last century. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like a lot of his, a lot of he translated a whole lot of of uh, Anglo-Saxon texts. His Beowulf translation is is considered to be one of the best. Did you, out of curiosity, just thinking of Anglo Anglo Saxon literature, uh, did you ever read um, the Crystal Cave trilogy by chance? No. How about you, Smud? Have you ever heard of it, or am I speaking? Sorry, did you say the Crystal Cave trilogy? Yeah. No, I, I haven't heard of that. I'm sorry, a little busy uh, setting up the uh, the stream here. I think we're live. I think YouTube likes me, so let's just get started. We'll talk about that right after. That sounds cool. Uh, yeah. Learning about Tolkien is always a nice. Uh, Nice distraction, though. So we'll get back on that. Anyway, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is uh, Smudcast number 149. This is going to be a little different because we've got some new guys here. We haven't seen Crazy Philosopher in a while. We haven't seen uh, Orange Kuhn in a while. We haven't seen <laughs> other people in a while. So they're not here yet, but they will be popping in. So thanks for tuning in. So we are covering a new video from, who is this person? What do we call it? The Sin Squad. This is from a video last year, back in September 2019. It's a rather popular video. This lady makes rather popular videos just once a month here and there. And it's about why fandoms are toxic. So before we start, I want to say that she does believe in shipping, in headcanon, and all the things that you do in your head that make you enjoy a piece of work better that's not actually there. And there's nothing wrong with doing whatever you want in your head. It's your imagination. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Go crazy. Just, just don't, don't argue that that's real, okay? Yeah, that's yeah, what exactly don't, what I wanted to say. Yeah, just don't, don't, don't say that it saves. Right, so if you watch the BBC Sherlock and you think John and, and Sherlock are going to be a thing and they're not because John gets married to Mary, that's that. Okay, you're wrong. It's not gonna think. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> just always reminds me so much of reader response well, theory, which always made me so mad in uni. I, I can't Is believe that, that was a thing theory? until I heard about it, and I was like, "That can't be real." Oh uh, well, that's a real it, thing. If you use it in extremely specific circumstances, it can be incredibly interesting. But most people use it to say things about the texts which aren't there. Which frustrated me to no end because the longer I was at uni, the more and more people started approaching texts from the outside. So they had certain lenses that they applied to the text rather than just going out, you know, having the text at the center and then drawing bigger and bigger circles, which is how I learned it. Well, whenever you, you read any book, it doesn't matter what you're studying. You have to take it for what it's worth. You don't start interpreting something with yes. a religious lens because you're religious or uh, from a philosophical lens. If it's like a the, the con like Aristotle would not look at stuff that's done by Nietzsche. It'd be like, why would you bother having this dynamically different concept of categories or logic where Nietzsche's talking about the 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 onus on man is to self actualize. You're just like that's. These are very different ideas. Unless you want to talk about uh, eudaimonia or some excellence form of of existence, but that's a, a feminist reading of the portrayal of nature in Beowulf. Oh I, yeah, that. Oh god. <laughs> well, I was about to say, I, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm guessing. So what this sounds like to me then is where your response is just basically making whatever interpretations you want about the text, regardless whatever um, intent or surf, whatever surface level thing is there. The, the circumstance in which you can use it is is basically, it, it originally it was based around observing readers' reactions to texts or stories and looking at looking what that can tell you about the story. So in a way, if you purely just observe, you can just, you know, look at it. It's, it can be extremely interesting to just look what, re what things 
made people react in what ways. That was kind of the original intent, but then it became this huge thing about, you know, text doesn't even matter anymore, just what people got out of it. You, yeah, that's... That's a little bit of an issue. All right, so uh, we've got... Well, how long is this? This is about a 20-minute video. So I don't know how much we're going to pause, but hopefully it won't drive us nuts. And... <laughs> uh, It'll, it'll just be a nice, easy watching sort of video. We all sit back and go, mm hmm, I disagree because of XYZ, and then we'll keep on going like it's no big <laughs> deal. I'm sorry, I'm looking at what they have on the chalkboard. <laughs> that's, that's a great way to start off. Yeah, wonderful kids program, <laughs> that, uh, that show. <laughs> that was, that's great editing. Wow, I'm surprised she was able to scratch that on there. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> It was to run. Ask myself these so she's she speaks very softly. I have the volume cranked up all the way. So if you guys want to listen, I up mine as well. Yeah, you have to yeah, crank it up all the way. So here we go. Okay, there we go. Days. What the hell happened to fandom? When and why did things get this bad? How did we go from an era where live and let live and don't like don't read were the maxims of fandom spaces to now? <laughs> I can give you an exact example. It's it's when social media started taking off and people could see other people's reactions more easily. That's one way of looking at it. Social media allows people to interact very quickly with yeah. knee-jerk reactions. So same with comment sections in YouTube or Tumblr uh, responses, uh, comments from there. So, also, also uh, if we're dealing with... If we're dealing with things that people are very passionate about, passions can run very hot. They can get very, very passionate, which can seem angry, even though they're just very impassioned about the thing they like. Yeah, that's a, a lot of, I noticed, a lot of things I noticed, like the biggest example I can think of was like the whole Star Wars critique. A lot of people, you know, they'll critique things because they're passionate about it. They're interested in yeah. the they're interested in seeing it develop and they want to point out the flaws because they hope someone take notice and then they'll make it better. It doesn't necessarily mean it trashes the work. It's just, you know, hey, you have a little inconsistency here. Or, hey, I really think that you could have improved this. It's, it's never personal. So <laughs> maybe it's also people's, uh, maybe it's people's reaction to the reactions that have also changed over the years. I don't know. But I'd like to see where she goes with this. Yes. Hey, Sorry. Sonny, you get the news? Apparently, we can't ship in Trapta with anyone anymore because she's child coded. I'm from the Voltron what? fandom. Is what does child coded there, mean? So, so there was a. Th I think I know. Actually, believe it or not, I think I know what that is specifically referring to. I know what it is. <laughs> no, no, not the child coded, the Trapta thing. It's oh. Because so it's because everyone thought she was like a kid and then her main love interest in the actual show was and who everyone was pairing her with anyway was someone of an adult someone of like close looked he looked he sounded like he was close to his 30s maybe his 40s uh and then like the author had to come out and like back up it's like no 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 she's she's actually she's actually like 25 it's okay she's a 2000 year old dragon shut up no oh. <laughs> exactly it was just one of those it's just one of those crazy things, the, the She-Ra fandom. Are we watching anime? Oh, no, it's just She-Ra. Okay. Yeah, I, watch, I watch all Western. I watch all Western and Eastern animation, even some French anime. Oh, that's cool. I, I like that. barely ever watch stuff, but I read a lot when I have time. I know nothing about Voltron, though, so this is going to be an interesting. <laughs> I'm going to have no idea what she's talking about. It's gonna be great. Many of you know, and as a person who shipped Keith and Shiro, I was at the forefront of the war between folks who, well, liked the ship, and those who believed we were a plague on society with a vendetta to corrupt and sexually groom all children because we shipped two unrelated adults. Nothing like this kind of Tumblr message to really make you sit back on a rainy Tuesday and say, what? I used to be able to dismiss the harassment with, well, people are crazy. That's not harassment. That's just someone leaving a comment. 
I was going to say. Can I so just say this seems like an incredibly fair and absolutely not cherry picked example? So, I guess my question is: Is this going to be probably the structure of our argument? Is is that people in comment sections said mean things? I yeah, mean, I mean, if there are videos out there that are that are supporting it, or you know, actual like full on essays or articles, I'd be interested to see them. Yeah, this is any the, the whole part of the, the term fandom is fanatic, so it doesn't matter. Like, say, I do an analysis, like I did recently, of uh, the trailer for the teaser of Mass Effect. There were equal amount of people saying, oh, you missed this. Oh, you got this wrong. Oh, this is the, why are you so dumb? Why couldn't you see this? Yada, yada, yada. There's you know, so other people like, oh, you saw so much more than I did. This, there's nothing there. What are you doing? You're wasting your time. Like, it just, <laughs> you know, I can't win. You're never going to win with the fandom. So all you can do no, is, you're not. all you're going to do is be able to say your bit as clearly and succinctly as, as possible and hope for the best. So. It's just how it goes. So if you haven't grown out of that yet, you probably shouldn't be online. I was Message gonna... to really make you sit back on a rainy Tuesday and say, "What?" I used to be able to dismiss the harassment with, "Well, also, it's not harassment." Crazy, but over the years, this kind of toxicity has ballooned. To so yeah, again, again, the term toxicity. I just, you know, whenever I hear, hear that, it's like, what are you talking about? If it's bad. Yeah, I hate people being mean in a comment section i'm not going to say that they're not being i'm not going to say that they're not being dicks and they're not going to be idiots but yeah i like that's just don't don't read the comments or just brush it off i mean you're gonna have honest honest to god i have reached a point where i think when people say toxicity then just mean i received comments with which i wasn't able to deal yeah, I don't understand. Does it mean like it's poisoning what you said? Is it being I, multiplied because people like I, it or upvote? It, 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 uh, if I were to conceptualize it, I would say that uh, the example I would use is you like li really liking something, then going to a forum talking about it, and then you see a lot of people criticizing, which then starts quote unquote poisoning your mind to question yourself: Was it really that good? But that's a good thing. It's the same with people say there's like those. There, someone showed me an article about. Uh, the toxic masculinity of Sherlock Holmes, oh. Oh, <laughs> and and it was by a it was by a, it was by a female professor of masculine studies. I was like, well, okay, that's weird, and oh, what? and yeah, and they define the term, and it's like there's five traits of a of a toxic male, and one of them is strength, one of them is, is stoic. <laughs> you know, it's like how is strength toxic, and if it is. Why is that a bad in. thing? Yeah, they, they never explain why X is bad. They just say, you know, it's bad, so therefore toxic. It's it's a label. It's it's just a label at this point. It's a way to basically well, shut down the other side or yeah. basically dismiss um, somebody. It's like, ah, you're saying that because you're a toxic male. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> you win. You it, got me. It's kind of like saying... You're a reactionary we get from YouTubers. It's like, what does that even mean? I don't know what that... What are you trying to tell it's, me? It, it's basically the I can't really answer to your arguments card. You, you're just... Or the, basically, you, I don't like... I don't want to hear what you have to say. You, you're, the, you're the enemy person. You, you disagree with me person. It's like, what? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, here's... You know, yeah, uh, the point where I'm... Uh, if I don't like what the other person is saying, or if they're making good points, and I'm just like, you know what, you're right. It still bugs me. Can't identify why, but it still bugs me. But you do have a fair point. You have approached this with logic and precision. Good for you. See, that'd be great oh, wow. if whatever headcanon they have has evidence and reason and thought out ideas. And you sort of get that from like crazy ideas, even that, that there's no way they're possible, like the indoctrination theory and mass effects. Like, that's crazy. But at least yeah. they're working off some evidence, but they take that evidence and run with it so far to make this gigantic simulation in their heads. You're like, dude, that's not that can't be right. There's no way. And it's not right. And they still they still think it's true. It's like, oh jeez. When when it, I tell my friends, me and my friends talk about this a lot, and what we say is, is basically when you when you start using excessive hand waving, like it's like, well, what about this? Ah, that doesn't matter. And you do it again and again and again. The repetition eventually starts to kind of drive home the point that what you're saying is built on crap. 
And as, as nice as it sounds, as it, it would be nice that it would tie all the loose ends together. It doesn't necessarily sell it. You know? It's it's not even a house of cards. It's like there's no foundation what to speak of. You're just, <laughs> yeah. like, you're like, Where there's you... just cards floating in air and you're just kind of snatching them out of there. Yeah, you yes. haven't even made the deck yet. You're just conceptualizing things. That's not true. It's not how it works. Anyway. You're uh, trying to build a house of cards and water. It's, it's something like that. It's hard to give a proper analogy of, of what they're trying to do. Oh God, she did a Shira in Redemption video. I'll have to watch this later. Oh joy. <laughs> okay, uh, Road Harushin, thanks. Uh, can I say that honestly? I've grown sick and tired of ships, and how much they keep impacting either the fandom or the show in some ways. The points of death threats to staff. You know what? I I get that women are really into romance, and they're going to see connections they want to see that aren't there because they're attracted to characters. They like the characters for whatever reason. And they want them to be happy because they're because they're ladies. They they like the happy endings. I get it. You love the romance. I understand that. But sometimes the space Just opera chill. action adventure is not a romance story. <laughs> it's an action yeah. adventure story. That's actually that's actually a complaint was, from uh, from Yahtzee a long long time ago. He was wondering what the Western tendency is to shoehorn romances into every single piece of media that they can get a, their hands on because all of us have just live extra incredibly empty lives so we, we need to fill we're obsessed fantasy. with with ro with romantic in inclusions or with sex with intrigue of does she does she not like me uh but it's, it extends to like fantasies so two guys which are just like war buddies are suddenly into it. it's like no they're, they're they're trying to kill the enemy and they're consoling themselves because they kill people. They're not actually crying because they love each other romantically. Are you saying, are you saying that Marcus and Don really aren't butt buddies? Is that what I, you're I'm saying me? love cannot bloom on a battlefield is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm embarrassed every time I think of that idea because of Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Wait, did... God, I've never... I... I'm not a fan of his works, unfortunately. I'm probably one of the. I, I, I have to say, I, gameplay wise, I don't particularly like them, but the stories just fascinate me. Oh, they're ridiculous! They're so crazy. You're like, oh, we're fighting a Power Ranger who covers himself in bees. Really, <laughs> the pain. Uh, I heard his last game was kind of a flop. Is that true? That yes. the delivery. Um, yes. All right, which. Oh, you mean Death Stranding? No, uh, yeah, that that was. I found a, it interesting. The I found it interesting. Yeah, the app, the post-apocalyptic Amazon simulator. Yeah, it's fantastic. You walk around delivering a suitcase. It's great. I I have fun, but then again, I have very strange tastes. It's like it's like my job, but without the post-apocalypse or with the post-apocalyptic ending added in there. Yeah. Well. Anyway. Let's see what she has to say about uh, head cannons next. Told proportions, and I've had to face the fact that plenty of otherwise normal people can and will become serial harassers. For my own sanity, I've endeavored to come up with some theories as to why the fuck that would happen, and I'd like to share some of them with you today. Maybe we can't stop this endless wave of harassment, but at least we can be. Oh, oh, my comment section. Oh no, the harassment. Oh. Okay. Well, one, one thing I've noticed. <laughs> Should we send her some? That, uh, some some fandoms are a bit more insane than others, and two of those fandoms are in this video. At least from what I've heard. Here is yeah. Here is the number one voted comment on her video. Is the first one I scrolled down it has four point two thousand upvotes, and it says honestly, shipping is fine. But shippers tend to be the most toxic part of their fandoms. Shippers need to separate head cannon and actual cannon, forcing the creator to make your ship cannon kind of miss the plot. So, this is even with a video that has 23,000 upvotes and almost 700 downvotes. So, these people are like, yeah, you can do whatever you want in your head, but you're also screwing us all over when you won't shut the hell up. But what's true and false? So, yeah. Into understandable's unbridled rage comes from. <laughs> it comes from Mola. 
Yeah. For some reason, there's this idea in fandom that there can only be one correct reading of a source text. I suspect some of this comes down to bad English class. So the, when they say reading, they mean interpretation, I assume. not Because when you, when you read a text, you either can read it in the language it was written or you know like another language that the, the original language was written in. So that would be reading the stuff. Yeah. So that is, there's only one way to read. It's multiple ways to interpret, of course. So Yeah, uh, but there's a limited set of interpretations because there can be interpretations that are not f well founded enough on evidence from the text. Yes, of course. To be viable. Yeah, we don't we don't ex assume someone to read like uh, uh, I don't know Marcus Aurelius and go, oh yeah, he really wanted to kill all the heathens. Um, yeah, no, I know. I just one thing I've personally encountered with a lot of stuff uh, at uni, especially in, in interpreting literature, is that uh, because some people focus so much on on hate on on disproving the fact that there's disproving the idea that there can only be one interpretation that they have gone complete utter way that there's just everything is possible yeah it's just a free for all that is a bit i don't even i don't think i've ever encountered that but oh god it it, it has to become quite prevalent to well, not everything is possible. But some people have gone so ridiculous that they just see things where you're like, but that's nowhere f to be found in the text. I don't think she has that uh, that background in academia to, to argue that point. <laughs> I think her focus is just on watching cartoons. But that's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's true fine. enough. That's fine. I don't mind. Classes. In a perfect world, teachers would grade students' literary analysis papers on how well they support their claims with evidence from the source text. However, there are teachers out there who base the validity of students' analyses on how well they reflect the author's intentions. In such a way... I don't know about that. I've never... I, well, I really don't know about that. Yeah, I've never encountered a professor like that before. M most, because every professor says it's impossible for us to say what Shakespeare intended. We can't ask him. Yeah, it goes back to the the classic. Uh, what? How is it like to be a bat? Like, what does that mean? How how can we ever know what it means not to be another animal? But taking that a step further, how can I know what George is thinking? How could I possibly yeah. know what's well, in his mind? There are some things you can say, like uh, for example, saying that Shakespeare in in one of his play he meant to definitely critique modern day capitalism. You can say, well, no. He can't have intended that because he couldn't have known about it. Capitalism wasn't a thing yet, so. <laughs> yeah, true enough. That's what I mean. He, they, there are certain intentions that are impossible for the authors to have had. So you can just take those away, but to get to the real intentions they had, you, it's impossible. Right. Students are encouraged from embracing new views of a text and are rewarded for seeking out the sole correct interpretation of the source text as intoned by the author, their teacher, or some esteemed academic. This idea, that there is a wrong and a right way to interpret a text, is deeply flawed. Stories do not exist in a vacuum. Every reader brings a new worldview to the stories they consume. It's all too common for readers to pick up on elements that the author themselves didn't even consider. As long as you can build a solid argument with real textual evidence, uh, okay. guess what? All right. I mean, I'm not I'm not against what she's saying, but Yeah. You have to have a really darn good argument if your ideas go way off course. Yeah, that that's that's exactly why I was like, "Uh, you really need if if you have a, a, an outlandish reading, you really need to found it extremely well." I'm trying to remember that uh, is it hieronetics? Like it's the interpretation of like scripts, like holy scripts or, or uh, holy books by various uh, religions. That uh, I'm not sure how that's called. It's it's yeah it's something I can't remember the exact term. I, it's hieronetics or something like that. But there's all kinds of studies of of theology of that where yeah oh I know a truckload about how theologists at least modern day approach the Bible and everything right. And they have their own ethical framework, which they apply, which can be sort of massaged to make sense based off 
their understanding of the era it was written and who could have possibly written it and yeah. where they were, etc. So it's like, all right, that's interesting because you wouldn't know, like an average reader wouldn't know, oh, maybe uh, yeah. the Apostle Mark actually did live th during this time and, and thought these thoughts. So, yeah, and I know so much. I know a lot about it because my mother has a master's in theology. Oh, wow. And uh, so it, it's the, the method is called... Uh, I think critical historic reading. So you try to figure out what was the historic circumstances and why people possibly could have written it that way. So there, there is actually quite a lot of, of uh, methodology and well, also scientific methodology in it, more than people would think. Right. Uh, her hermeneutics. There it is. Hermeneutics. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just found it too. I I don't know the English terms too well because I, I mostly had uh, know all that stuff in German. Oh, I gotcha. See, everyone should be learning German. It's just the, the basic, most easiest literal Latin well, Greco language to learn. Uh, German I, slash I, German slash Mundart, as as we like to call our dialects. Oh, really? I was a sucker and I went for Arabic instead. Damn it! <laughs> Always getting caught up. In those in those Latin conjugation of verbs, like ah, just go back to Sanskrit, man. Just, that's the way to go. Oh, good. <laughs> Sanskrit! It's, really nice it's actually a really easy way of writing. I, oh, Sanskrit gives me gives me always gives me flashbacks to my uh, traditional Tibetan courses. Ooh. Because traditional traditional Tibetan, the written form, just took Sanskrit grammar and slapped it onto Tibetan. <laughs> It's it's so strange to learn. Oh boy! Well, we're not going to get into any sort of uh, yeah yeah sorry. semiotics today, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> Your interpretation of the text is valid, but if you were to believe the old adage that there's only one right way to look at a text, then of course you're going to feel a sense of competitiveness with anyone whose reading opposes your own. Through that lens, if she is the what? correct uh, reading, then on. plants can't exist, and vice versa. How do you actually pause it? You have to click the pause button. Oh, sorry. Wait. I there also had a question. I have a question. Wouldn't you be competitive, quote unquote, competitive anyways, if somebody's reading different from you to figure out, oh, if it's correct or not, or if it's viable I'm or not? I'm going to take the opposite stance of that. I'm not going to be competitive with somebody based off what I'm interpreting from a text. I don't. Well, where, what is her connection between competition and reading interpretation here? That's the part that's causing I wouldn't, me to pause a little bit because i wouldn't exactly say competitive but i i personally when i hear reading of somebody that differs from mine I'm, I'm extremely interested so i really start prodding it questioning it to see if it, it it holds up so that might seem competitive i would say even in creative writing class with the author in the room and we're having a round table discussion and we're all critiquing, and it's it's pretty much a bloodbath. You're just like attacking the crap out of whatever this guy wrote, and that's normal. That is like normal uh -huh. behavior. That's, but that's not competitive, though. That's just that's just typical. That's just typical workshop stuff. Uh, I I uh, I think some people see it as competitive. I because they see it as hey, they are prodding my stuff. They're trying to compete. You know what I mean? So, so I guess I can see where I guess I can see that. So as okay, so like for me, like as an analyst and everything like that, we take our analytical papers and we tear them apart, just like Smut said. Like that's oh, no, that's uh, but that yeah, yeah, no, I know. But yeah, that's not that's not being that's not being competitive. That's just being professional. I think there's a difference between the two. Here. Um, there's a difference between that. Yeah, we we similar with us in in our creative writing classes. I mean, also for example, I'm personally I'm an extremely critical person when asked to to look at something, and I always mean it in good good faith and, and wanting to help the person. But some people interpret that as you attacking what they wrote, as you trying to quote unquote compete, saying that they didn't do quite well and. Depending on what you say, if you then say, I would have done it this way, they think you want to, you know, one-up them. I have experienced that. Uh, it's strange because in creative writing class, someone will use a different lens, and you're sitting there like, well, if I was yeah. in, in this part of the world at this time period, I would have think that, I would have thought this is a, 
a very uh, biased thing to say against someone's race. It's like, well, no, that's, you know, we're, we're in a future world that, that these issues of, of racial superiority are gone. So I don't like care about that, <laughs> but they'll bring it up anyway. And you're like, okay, well, you're not my audience. So I don't care what you have to say, but you still have to be cognizant that there is an, uh, a person who might pick this book up for whatever reason or this story and go, oh yeah, this is crap. And you have to address that intelligently enough that you can at least appease them and hook them into the story on some other level. So it's kind of like uh, going to a buffet and you're vegetarian. So you got to have something there, which like, a, like an amazing salad bar or some, some side dishes which aren't meat that they'll stay at the restaurant and eat with you and have a good time. So it's it's kind of like, yeah, you don't want to dumb your, your story down too much, but you still have to keep the door open for that person to want to keep reading and keep having yeah. fun and being entertained. So well, I mean, that's, but that's, you know, that, that also just depends on your audience. Like you said, though, like when you're writing for a particular audience, then you, you tailor it to that, oh, yeah. to that field. Oh yeah. If you're if you're writing for high-minded academics and you don't need to dumb it down too no, much no, no, because no. hopefully they should be able to understand the words and the edges. That would be using. that would be a very specific niche audience, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for general audience stuff, I would agree. You know, you got to keep it broad. That's right. Absolutely nothing wrong with a head cannon and those are valid by nature of being totally subjective. What people sure. fail to realize is that several objectively correct analyses of a text can also exist at one time. I agree. Just because your interpretation differs from someone else's doesn't either. mean one of you is wrong. As long as the objective analysis don't actually don't contradict actually to each other. What's well, kind of interesting, or sometimes itself. they do. Some, yeah, obviously you can't contradict yourself, but what ends up happening is the conclusion ends up being correct anyway. So it doesn't yeah. it doesn't really matter. Like say I, we anal analyze the uh, the ships and the TLJ, the, the the bombers to be crap, and I say they're crap, therefore they're bad. And you say, well, they're too big for their size. They have no shield. Like you go into detail. We both know they're yeah. bad. It's just that you took a more analytic approach. I just didn't like it because of what I saw. I didn't express myself properly, but the end result is still bad writing. So. You know, it ends up being the same result. We just, the explanation is not as detailed. Yeah, I would say that that's an extension of what I, what one of us was saying, though. That's not a con, that's not one of us contradicting each other, though. That That's what I mean. It's like, you're, you, so like, I think if, what I was thinking in my head was something like, you say that the bombers are, are bad because, you know, ship design, they're too slow, their payload will kill them instantly. And then I say, no, that's a good thing. Because you know it kills the it, it kills the pilots, so you save on human resources <laughs> and money and food, so you don't have to worry about paying them later. That that is that is. Uh... <laughs> but, then, but you run into a problem because then it's just like okay, so then it, what so is the idea of a win then in this, in this case? <laughs> so technically speaking, depending on how you argue, both could be correct from a different perspective, but that that would be a go, you know. Well, hopefully from a narrative perspective, we'd understand what's going on. But yeah, if you yeah. want to put them in a vacuum, I guess you'd both be right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's sorry. So that's what my, that's what my point was. It's All like, right. it, outside of a vacuum, sure, they, they'd be fine. But uh, also, just generally speaking, some readings, if you were to go with interpretations, can be quite different, but both can be plausible. If we were to go to be a bit further away from the text as an interpretation of everything, yeah, I, I think I, that's where she was talking about. I give the example of a chair. Like if you sit in the chair and it's the best chair, it's very comfortable, it supports you, everything's fantastic about the chair, it's an objectively good chair, and then you put give the chair to, to a gorilla, maybe they don't even know what a chair is, maybe they sit on it, it smashes because they're gigantic and they weigh so much. That would be an objectively yeah. bad chair for a gorilla. So both truths yeah, are... Are this are true, and they're both objectively true as well. So, different function and different uh, parameters for what constitutes sitting, and uh, exactly, so, yeah. So you could have all these different walks of life, and people saying why something would work for a certain situation and why not. But that's getting into the concept of functionality in a story, why certain components might not work appropriately 
for the premise of a story. So a horror story, if it doesn't have action, if it doesn't have horror. And there's the subjective response, which is, oh, I wasn't scared of a uh, found footage film like Blair Witch. Therefore, it's not a good film. But the objectivist will go, okay, well, I can understand other people being scared. And they elucidate the, the, the feelings of, of uh, claustrophobia and, and action because everything's happening so quickly with this handy cam sort of shaky thing happening. So this, yeah. this, so all those psychological conditions are, are present even though you are like a master uh, somersaulter so you don't get that kind of problem. You, you don't get scared easily. You've walked on high, high rises. You don't, you know, fear of heights don't bother you. So these things don't personally affect you, but you can still see that, yes, this would be a normal condition for the average human to be afraid of. And plus the whole, all the weird, you know, witchcraft nonsense that happened. Anyway. I wondered why we sh- fans were so determined not to let go of the John Locke ship after the last season aired to the point that many of us bought into a conspiracy about a secret episode where everything turned out to be gay the whole time. I suspect a lot of that hysteria boiled down to a desperate desire to avoid a reality where we'd been proven wrong. Because in today's fandom climate, wrong means stupid and crazy. It shouldn't be that. Not necessarily. I'm not saying most of the time, but sometimes that's the case. But we don't argue with these people. We just go, oh, really? Raylo is a thing. All right. That way, we thought the signs pointed to a great LGBT reveal, and they didn't. So what? We were wrong. We should be able to move on from that. But this constant giant argument over what's wrong and what's right has granted undue significance to those two sides. Just as a short aside to bring back Tolkien, uh, I thought, uh, it just reminded me of a quote where uh, I don't remember exactly how it went, but Tolkien basically said, if you think... So people who always think when they see two friends that there must be sex involved are retarded. Really? He said that? Some, something like that. Uh, <laughs> he, he just said that true friendship, people who think that there's something sexual in there when they see two people being friends have never experienced true friendship. Oh. Sounds like he was a man of culture. Uh, sounds like he, he knows how to be a, an adult, yeah. Yeah, I, I I would definitely yeah, I would agree with that. So, so my question is this: so is is she basically arguing then that uh, that there is no point in debating whether a head cannon is valid or not? Well, it, what, if that's the case, I would kind of disagree with that because at least if you if you can dismiss the idea, well, this is just head cannon, or at the very least, this isn't well, it, this it, isn't anything that's lining up with the facts of the story. Then yeah, at least you've reached something. It's one thing that's, to be head cannon; it's another thing to project. This is going. This is what I want to happen in the next episode, and it's categorically proven wrong. And you have to say, well, that was a, that was a silly idea, because the story is not about a romance between two men. You can call it a bromance. You can call it a friendship. You can call it whatever, but it's not an actual romantic relationship. These are two guys who one of them is bored out of his mind, and the other one is just eternally bored because he's so smart and they get along because they're excited by murder and one of them is super genius Danger. and the other one's just like oh my god i'm, I'm around a super genius <laughs> uh i want to want to you know experience life again because life is so drab uh that's how it was presented at least in the bbc show so you can did you can induce all sorts of things from that but you realize that's not what the story is and it it was never supposed to be. So again, this is the typical attitude from women. They see a show. Oh, look at this relationship. Oh, it must be more than just friendship. Or it's like, well, no, it could be, but it's not. Like, there's no, inc- there's no inclination for that. It makes sense that people would go to such extreme, unsavory ends to protect the correct status of their textual interpretations when the alternative is a public execution. No one wants to be forced into the crazy fan box, and some fans are scared enough of that label to harass people who dare challenge the validity of their analyses. I don't know, this sounds like she uh, really, really wanted John and and Sherlock to be a thing, and she's feeling bitter. (laughs) 
that people attacked her as a result. I think that's what's going on here. Because once you're proven wrong, it's like, oh, I'm wrong. Yeah, that should be a simple statement of fact. It should not be a big deal. You should I feel not- like she. I feel like she's belaboring the point, so I'm trying to make sense of her word salad to to understand what she's trying to get at in the first place. Other than people shouldn't be mean to each other on yeah, the internet. Yeah, pretty much. It's all it is. Yeah, stop, stop calling us crazy, okay? Like, uh, stop being crazy. <laughs> well, I was gonna say this is, video isn't a isn't a good evidence for yeah. a good reason. Not to stop calling you crazy. So yeah. Ow. I'm not listening to me. That's because you're crazy. See, that's it's me running down the stairs. from the real world, but it's become more than that. It seems to me that for many fans like myself, fandom has become a coping mechanism. It's a safe space. The real world <coughs> is fucking terrible. So people spend more and more time online in communities where they can find joy and safety through fantasy. The trouble here lies in the fact that fandom doesn't work as a safe space. Okay. Uh, now Why do you need a safe space? Yeah, this is getting strange. Um, I don't think we've ever... I've ever seen the online community of people who have the same interests as I do as a safe space. It's just a topic... Same. Yeah, it's just a topic we all like talking about. That's about it. I mean, well... The- then again, I as I, I just absolutely have an a hatred for the idea of safe spaces, because so, if if you need if you're not strong if you need a safe space, it just shows to me it shows a personal weakness. It just you need you should be able to be strong enough to basically be your own safe space. Within yourself, you should be honest with yourself. She like she's completing the term "safe space" uh, and and something to wind down and relax with, like you know, possible. Like that because I if, it, if she's talking about something like that, then I could kind of see it. Like yeah, you know, writing or reading this, or writing or reading, consume, consuming a uh, fandom. Yeah, that could be a nice way to kind of wind down after a long day. You know, just like the rest of us, we like to play video games or watch TV or movies. Like just like any other piece of me- media, but a safe, I, yeah, I don't know of any, I don't know of any place that many people go to looking for a safe place, not at least on the internet. It, it sounds like she's yeah. rather insecure with whatever she's passionate about, which I guess is a more of a female thing. I don't know because she's talking about shipping and, and being comfortable. It's like, well, what's like, don't talk to those people you don't like. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are insecure male YouTubers too. Sure, so sure. I'm just, I'm just trying to like, I've never been like insecure with my opinions of the things I like, like Mass Effect. People think I'm a hater because I'm highly critical of the things I like. It's like, well, good for you. Here's my argument. Here's my evidence. Here's my stuff. What do you think? I think you're a hater, really. Oh yeah, big time. You're so mean. You're the guy, the guy who has the has Shepard as an avatar, and probably will cover any Mass Effect video that will come out. That's yeah. Well, that's how it was on the the BSN, the Bioware social network, and it was like guys, like there are huge problems with the narrative. In case you haven't, they're like, oh, you just you're just being nitpicking. You don't understand storytelling. Like, no, no, no. I went to school and I read some books and I wrote some books. Ah, damn it. I have a working brain. That yeah. I, I can analyze and I can connect dots. Yeah, I know. I, I have to correct what I said before. It wasn't actually Tolkien who said it. It was Lewis, C.S. Lewis. Oh, well, that's pretty close. I mean, those are almost the same. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that in front of some of my family members. They might throw a fit at they, that. They got yeah. along. C.S. Lewis and Tolkien got along. They were friends. They knew each other. Oh, it, yeah, my uh, my one of my uncles. He he loves Tolkien. Is Tolkien fanatic? But uh, Lewis, he he he's not a fan because he's because of the allegory uh, writing, allegorical writing for uh, Chronicles of Narnia. Oh really? Oh. But yeah, it's always kind of a shame because I think he I think he should give him another read. I think he'd like them if he uh didn't they, gave it another shot. Didn't but, they? Uh, they they must have played off each other because like, they were encouraging the other one to do something. They, they were they were friends and they they often read each other's stuff and critiqued it and stuff like that. Yeah, they basically. I mean, 
the way that I understood is they helped develop uh, they helped develop each other's writing. Yeah. Yeah. That's generally but, um, what writers do when they're together. So And see, they criticized each other and they and they still were friends till the end of days. Well, it's great because and if you have a, on the internet, they were face to face in a bar. If you have criticism from someone who actually does the same thing you do, it's like, oh, you probably have a good point. Let me think about that. But we're talking about Lewis and Tolkien, so it's like, oh, okay, these giants. It's all right, yeah, they probably know a little bit more than the rest of us. The internet as well is not a cozy little side room with beanbag chairs and fairy lights and hot cocoa. It's a godless wasteland full of porn. If you're lucky, you'll find a corner where people always tag their posts so you can avoid seeing things you'd rather not see. But Oh, by the way, this person's on Tumblr, so I guess it's safe, <laughs> it's safe now because they got rid of all the, the R-rated plus network or content. So, okay, which, complete, which completely neutered Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> no one else goes on Tumblr anymore. <laughs> Aw, poor Tumblr. What, uh, what what is this what are we paused on right now like what show is this I have no don't think idea. I've ever seen it couldn't tell you yeah it looks like I'm they have a, maybe a chat will chime in. It looks like they have a computer from the 1970s on the left acting as a I don't know a design maybe for a closet or is that an actual tape drive I don't know that actually does look like uh, something that my uncle used to code on yeah I know like in COBOL or something, <laughs> or or with, uh, what are they, flash disks? What are they called? Uh, uh, cards, flash cards? Yeah, there we well, go. He just called them, so he just told me that they were basically punch cards, punch and that's cards. what he would program off of. There you go. I know that because my dad used to be in the computer room at Kodak back in the day. If you go looking for content you don't like, you will find stuff that will upset you. <gasps> Nude. Tank. Challenge accepted. Not suitable for work. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. It's a Paul Rudd. Yep. I'm okay. There's no way to tidy things up to be your perfect meditation room, but people want to tame the wasteland. The longer you stay in a fandom space, the more risk you incur of becoming possessive of the property in question. The fandom stops feeling like a community of houses and more like a single room in your house for you and your friends to relax in where you know the source material better than anyone else. Wait. You, yours, yourself. Un Wait. Do I understand that correctly that... Wait, why can't you then just relax with your friends? Why do you need a community? Why is a, a certain Facebook group not to your liking? There's dozens for your fandom, I'm sure. Yeah, just just look for another one, or just you know when when she said you know it's not a, a good place to hang out with your friends. Or it doesn't feel like a place to hang out with your friends. I'm like, well, then why don't you just hang out with your friends? <laughs> Maybe they're not your friends. I don't know. <laughs> Aren't possible? Maybe they're not nice people in general. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they didn't accept her ship, so she just hates yeah. them now. Why doesn't everyone feel exactly the same as I do about my head cannon? Gee, I don't know. You're crazy. <laughs> I can't even get my get my friends who are on the same political spectrum as me to agree on most of my view. I don't know how I'd be able to have them agree on my head cannon. Yeah, one of my absolute best friends has extremely different political views than me. We get along fine. Yeah, yep. I've dated numerous women who had all kinds of different political spectrums. Didn't care. Has nothing to do with being in a relationship. It's like good for her. Ah. Some it sometimes does with me because I have uh, extremely negative experiences with them. And it's oh, okay. Well, that's that's a different story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You mean you have an extremely negative experiences with crazy people? Oh your... yeah, but that's life. Well, I mean. Yeah. Well, too too bad that that certain feminist that I had an extremely bad experience with <laughs> happens to be my mother, which is really bad. <laughs> Good old. So yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back, by the way. I'm going to keep listening, but I'm going to go grab a drink. All righty. Do that. I am I am alcoholless, so I only have my water, but that's... Oh, no, it's it's Diet Cola. Oh. I, I, just, I just had a wonderful glass of extremely tasty white wine. Oh, was it a, was it a Chardonnay? Uh, no, Italian. Uh, Malvira. 
uh, well, uh, Italian or no, produced in Italy, so it was an Italian wine. The place I work at gives us cr- uh, a Christmas basket every year, and this Ooh. year they had two bottles of wine in there. Very nice. Really uh-huh. good stuff. <sighs> well, yeah, Christmas is kind of ruined this year, but you know, it's always nice to get the good oh. stuff. Yeah. You just have to drink a lot more than everyone else this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a, co- a co-worker also didn't want his wine, so he gave me his. Wow. So I had four bottles of wine. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> My oh. backpack was heavy, but it was yeah. worth it. I, I would say so. I go back to that work. Jeez. <laughs> understand that in order to maintain its power as a place of refuge, nothing threatening can enter this safe space. And as defined by the previous point, any different readings of a source text can be perceived as a threat because they supposedly what? undermine your experience of the story you love and care about. No, they don't. That's stupid. Why would it? Got, but e- even if it were... In layman's terms, did she just say that the facts are a threat to your headcanon, or did I miss it? Yeah, but how weak of an individual do you have to be to completely to get so upset at somebody having having a different reading and saying that theirs correct? You can just go say, uh, I don't give a shit and move on. And this is about fictional stories on like a television or a movie theater. Um, I, w- do you not realize what headcanon is? Like, it seems pretty imaginary in the first place. And if you are saying you are the arbiter of knowledge of a, of a lore, of a story, then what's the problem? You would just correct yourself if you were wrong. Yeah. Weird. Anyway. So much. The people who share your interpretations are right, and that makes them hip, and the people who don't are wrong, and that makes them crazy and stupid. And you have to put those crazy, stupid people... Okay, so wait. So you're blaming other people for calling you crazy and stupid, and now you're blaming those people who disagree with you crazy and stupid. Like, this is, <laughs> this is getting silly. It's going in circles, it feels like. They think I'm crazy, those crazy people. <laughs> Not How can they be so here. stupid and end crazy? The crazy one. Can't they see that John and Sherlock like love each other? It's so obvious. <laughs> but you see, if you interpret it the right angle and you switch the image around, you add a little bit of spice to it, covered in butter, then yes, yeah. yes, it is true. Yeah. Well. Uh, what isn't fandom wonderful? Or crazy people from fandoms? <laughs> Oh, it this all this this almost sounds like uh, a a Protestant calling Catholics idiots. Oh dear! It's like their interpretation is wrong. They uh, they call mine wrong. People <laughs> in their place, because if more people buy into their interpretation than yours, it makes you wrong, and you're the stupid and crazy one. <laughs> When you've built your safe space around one ship or headcanon and other fans ship something else, it doesn't feel like they're partying in the house down the lane with the door closed and the curtains drawn. It feels like, just by existing, they've barged into your house and hung up (coughs) shipping banners all over the place. Because there can only be one right interpretation, and there can only be one canon ship, and the safe space only has one room. And so it is that house cleaning takes the form of harassment and smear campaigns. A sort of get out of my house battle cry. It's a protection of the self and one's self-care routine. Get, Nothing I, I don't get what like she's alluding to. In my safe so, I, so for what I what I can understand is, is that basically saying that there will be like a fandom of forum, a community of some sort. People will have different interpretations on what the head cannons or the popular ship is, or something like that. And then moderators will come in and clean it up, and they'll dictate it to their tastes and their preference. And those people are bad. To which point I would just say, leave the forum or the fandom, and then go somewhere else to spout your views. Internet's a I big think place. I, There's room for us I, all, even for the crazy dictators and the crazy peasants. I, I think she wants. She tries to anchor it all around the uh, supposed other, as she described them, of people who think that there's only one right interpretation. And then she claims that those people just 
then tend to tell to yell at you because their your interpretation doesn't match up with their considered one correct one. Yeah, and she's she's just advocating is that basically that it's that it's fine to have a, a dictatorial That's approach to your interpretation as long as you're That's not the one through. being oppressed. <laughs> as long as you're not on the losing side of it, I guess. Here, Which is say welcome to human history, I guess. Here's uh, Ron Hushin again. The writer for Sherlock is gay, but didn't ship Sherlock and Watson. Isn't that odd? Uh, I didn't know that. Well, Sherlock, I don't know which which season, but I'm sure there's arguments to be made that the show went off the rails, not because of relationships, but because of storytelling. The yeah. show went off the rails around the third and fourth season. Let's... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think that's when I stopped watching. I it didn't even have anything to do, with, it had nothing to do with shipping, and everything that it turned into a Saul knockoff at the end. Oh dear. yeah, a thriller show, less of a detective show. I only stopped around the it, second season, and I guess got bored. It wasn't my thing anymore. The, the second season that, finale that, is probably where you you would just want to stop at. The first season was. Then, if, if while I was like while I was watching it and enjoying it, if if anyone had come up to me and asked me, "Hey, do you think that Sherlock and Watson are gay?" My answer would have been, "Who the fu- who the fuck cares?" <laughs> it's a joke in the show. It's a constant joke, but it, that's it. It's humor. It's meant to be laughed at and poked fun at. Yeah, and even then, just like most of the show is is nothing about that. It's just about solving cases, if I remember correctly. It's about solving cases. It's about it's about trying to get. It's basically about character development for John, for him trying to readjust the society and not, and to try and figure a way to reconcile his, basically his adrenaline junkie tendencies, with, and then at the same time trying to be this kind of human, this humanizing aspect for Sherlock, because Sherlock's a single-minded machine. There's a lot of there's a lot of interesting parts to their relationship. It has nothing to do with romance. be that thing a piece of analysis, a ship, or porn. But castle law should not apply to fandom spaces. We're a community, not a single house. The internet is for porn. The internet is for porn. What are you doing? You have until I reach the camera to click away. Oh no, mentions of balls. Oh my god. What is she doing? Oh, this is her. All right, let's talk about porn! While widespread multi-million dollar franchises that prop up harmful stereotypes and abusive relationships can and do normalize bad behavior over time, there's no, an argument don't. to be made for appropriately tagged, age-blocked, fictional porn. Because what? you have to understand that the human brain what? is fucking weird. What? Today, fandom folks want to believe that good moral people only fantasize about consensual vanilla sex. This is gonna be us going what for the next minutes? Sex. The truth what? is so much messier. <laughs> what? Just wait, 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 stop! Consumes- what was that? What? What is going on? I'm so confused. Good moral people only fantasize- It's common for the brain- Are we watching the, the same brain... video? Did we skip videos? Let's just- let me just- It's common for the brain to seek out fantasies surrounding domination, helplessness, and the taboo? What? So the taboo is going to be that's a what that's the a hell messy word to deal with. But how is I, it? Wait. Then again, even before that, she said that you know certain media normalizes bad behavior. And I'm like, no, no, that's wrong already. And then she just immediately gish gallops to the next thing. Wait, where is this in neurology that you've ever the brain, your your thinking machine, naturally wants. Fantasies about domination, helplessness, and whatever the taboo means. Like, what is... Smut, are you telling me that you don't have dreams about, you know, being the king of Canada and conquering all the world? Because I do. Uh, not really, no. I don't. Oh, uh, then your brain's just not... Your I, brain is not common. You're, I, you're an exotic brain. <laughs> Is that the taboo? Is is that like you? You're pretty much saying here's this extreme, here's another extreme, and then here's another extreme. It's one of these three extremes. You're like, well, wait, wait, why? What? <laughs> you're somewhere in there. It's like, uh, you're A, B, or C. Pick one. 
Well, you're A1, B1, or C1, or something in between. Like, I don't know. I, her, can, I, can I just ask, is her is a lot of her stuff coming off as word salad to you, or is that just or is that just No, me? no, no. These are very basic words, but just, just to take this in some sort of sexual context, if you have a fantasy, it's either domination, some, uh, helplessness, or, or some obscure sexual perversion. There's nothing in between. Like it can't just be a wholesome, wonderful desire for a beautiful woman and to live into your old age. You can never fantasize about that. It's just you can't do it. No. I, I <laughs> you absolutely can't. I, I can't think of a puppy and just oh, that's the most adorable thing in the world. And I can't like think it has to be perverted puppy or something. I don't know. I just I, God. well, did, did, were you? I don't know. That was something that was actually brought up, I think, in one of the one of the EFET podcasts because of uh, you know, the whole joke about Lord of the Rings with uh, like Sam and and, and uh, Frodo right being gay, like another one of the head canon things. And I think one of the people on there just basically is like, "What is this? What is this rampant need to sexualize everything? Like, why? <laughs> why do we have to do this? Why can't something just be left well and left no? Why can't you just have best friends who?" respect each other and would and would risk their lives for each other well why is that so difficult well lewis c.s lewis was wrong you know he he was a white british male so what does he know yeah it's about consensual vanilla sex the truth is so much messier just because a person consumes problematic fictional porn does not mean they want to Decades ago, psychologists believed that dreams and fantasies, yada, yada, yada. Wait, what? Therefore, women who had rape actually wanted to be... What is this? I. That view has been thoroughly debunked. Okay, fine. <laughs> what was the point of stating that view? Fantasies don't necessarily reflect <laughs> wishes. That's true. <laughs> Among those in long-term relationships, one of the most common fantasies is sex with somebody else, even when the daydreamer is happy in the relationship and has no real desire to jump to another bed. Wishing plays roles in some fantasies, notably dreams of striking it rich or losing weight, but having an erotic fantasy means in no way means you want it to come true. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Fantasies can just be fantasies. It doesn't necessarily mean it's wish fulfillment. That's true. That's fine. Yeah, felt like it was a lot of words to say a very simple sentence, but... Well, obviously this is just a, a rationalization of what your subconscious is telling you, what your dreams are telling you, and going, yeah, this is this is just my, my dreams. This is all it is. It's just fantastical ideas. Hello, Glib. Hey. Hey, Glib. How you doing? Oh, crap. How are you guys doing? Great. Great I have day. a headache. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I don't have a headache right now. Well, just as, watch this video just as, for a couple of minutes, and you'll you'll be joining us. You know, I was listening just as to a it. Morning, I was, yeah, I was listening to you, it. So, if uh, you start hearing strange noises, a cat has entered my room. Oh, oh! I was listening to it, and you know, it, it, there were some really interesting points about how you can interpret things. But the issue is that when people try and figure out exactly what happened using logic. They're not trying to interpret it on a personal sense. They're just trying to figure out with the least amount of headcanon what happens so that they can orient themselves. Uh, so it's it, it seems like it went from everybody should be able to have their own interpretation, which I agree, and you should be able to discuss that, which I agree, to you need to accept my interpretation as canon because I want to see these two characters be... Uh, right, how, don't dare. Know, pornographically, which I thought was an interesting, like, uh, perversion, like a perversion of what the thing is. Like, it has to somehow be a sexual gratification thing for the person watching it all of a sudden. That was really interesting. It, it feels like someone didn't bother to go to first year psych and was like, this is what goes through these people's minds when they go to first year psych. It's all about Freudian psychology and sex and. I have, I've design. never had anything psych, and I don't know. I know that's not what it's about. I know. I know well, if they went, if they went a little deeper, they'd realize that um, 
everything about sex is about power. So then they, you know, realize that they're... Marx was right. <laughs> no, what they're doing is they're using their shipping thing as a way to manifest some sort of power uh, in the fandom. It's pretty childish when you think about uh, the focus of sex when you study psychology or even know anything about psychology. And most people nowadays, even 40, 50 years ago, saw Freud as a kind of a joke. Like he, yes, he opened our eyes that yes, sex is a big component of our existence, but it's not like the basis for a philosophy of why people are the way they are. Uh, it, it sort of is ridiculous the, how the extremes he went and the techniques he used. And anyone who uses psychodynamic theory is kind of seen as a as a black sh horse. It's like, what is this person? <laughs> like, what is? Why are they even trying this technique on people anymore? Because look, have, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Apologize. Well, we have all better. You're just, you're just such a soft spoken gentleman. It's hard to tell when you're well, finished. Well, thank you. I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> that's how it works. But yeah, there's there's so many other therapies out there that are more, much more effective and actually accurate than Freud. And Freud is mostly an academic thing to look at, not a, a form of therapy. Yes, I'm sure there are psychoanalytics out there that do have practices, and they obviously help their their practitioners, but that's very rare, to my knowledge, at least. He has some stuff that is is quite uh, is good to this day, but it, it's not every definitely not everything, and uh, not practice related. It's more academic. I don't think it's um, judgmental to say that people should keep their specific sexual gratification out of the canon of a story because stories are not explicitly oh. about explicit <laughs> unless they are uh, but Definitely. then that's kind of writing your own thing yeah but then it usually has to do with something that there's something in the narrative that points to that game of thrones has a little bit more of that i would say and it kind of makes sense to have explicit content just hey i i don't blame anybody for searching rule 34 content were wired in all the time makes sense but as soon as somebody brings that up in a conversation about would the holdo maneuver make sense <laughs> <laughs> why didn't the eagles get used in lord of the rings well they were busy banging they were having what? an orgy i don't know about that <laughs> that's usually the answer you get if you bring it up it's like what you mean they weren't having an orgy oh well it's 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 like you know how people, <laughs> we always bring up tlj because they bring it up all the time and I think they bring it up all the time to piss us off. But like when, when two people touching hands are seen as this some sort of really romantic thing, like you can say that in a in a movie that you're like, that's such a profound moment. But then they they go crazy with extrapolating something from that. Like the yeah. the, the explicit is implicit to them. go outside in capacities. Hell, most people who fantasize about rape picture themselves as the victim. I've heard dead dove fictional porn referred to as a gateway drug to uh, real life uh, about black. This is degenerate. Yet plenty of people read what? murder mysteries I can feel the degeneracy. there's no fandom-wide outcry to ban those on the basis that they're a gateway drug to homicide. And Wait a second, let's just rewind that. Abominable what? Books. Yet plenty of people read murder mysteries and thrillers and there's no fandom-wide outcry to ban those on the basis that they're a gateway drug to homicide. Okay, that's weird. Uh, also, where are the studies that say dead dove fanfic and fan art lead to acts of violence? What? That's true. There wouldn't be. Also, uh, t give, given the massive track record of studies looking into m uh, violent consuming violent media, making you more violent, Mostly showing that there's no connection to it. I don't think they were right. uh, result in anything. We've, we've gone over this. It's it's been like twenty years now since. Uh, yeah, more than twenty years. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> hey, Smud, what do you think the motivation for making this video was? Uh, she's scared. They didn't like my fanfic. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. People bet in the comments of her videos are saying bad things to her. Ah. Uh. Well, that never happens. I've never seen that. Yeah. Whoa. Internet. People are people are incredibly cordial on the internet. I have always experienced civility and warmth in every corner I've explored. I understand people trying to find all this sense of community and stuff on the internet, but that's not the place to do it. I mean, you, you can have random people that you never met before be your tribe, but it's all about context, and, and the internet doesn't provide any kind of human interaction that's beyond... 
you know, speech and sometimes sight. It's supposed to be a place for like broadcasting and and discussing things in in a in an idea based sense and exchanging facts. It's not meant really meant to be your community. I mean, yeah, you can have people that you know that you see every day. You know, you got your boys, the Smudcast boys. How are the boys doing? But it's not like they're your neighbor. You know what I mean? They're not. It's not like they live yeah. next door to you. It's not like they're gonna come down the give you a hand on your well, because they know how you, to you, fix your car or something like that. You can't borrow an eggs from them. But you can you can do everything that the internet has. And I, so I'm kind of always been against the idea of the internet being this kind of community because it's not real. It's just a series yeah. of inputs and outputs. Eh, I don't know. I like the human quality of of the real world, and then I also like um. There's just I like so fandoms much... being based on Sorry. some kind of canon, so that we can all just agree what happened, and then you go, "Oh, I wish it was yeah. more like this," and then I go, "Yeah, that'd probably be better." At least we can agree on what reality is, you know. I mean, if you're saying that, yeah, people who you just strictly just meet on the internet, not being necessarily a community, because I have, I mean, I've had friends that I've been introduced to that I've actually gone met in real life. We yeah, you know, we hang out every other weekend and everything like that. Absolutely, absolutely. But that that yeah. that's like um, that's a friendship. You know what I mean? Well, imagine. Yeah, I get what you're yeah. It's not like a. That's not like a, a tribe necessarily. Yeah, it's but, it's not like it's a, an actual like town. But where imagine people, you write like, are dependent on each other. Imagine you write some my tribe. some <clears throat> some slash fanfic on fanfic dot net, and everyone wants to be your friend, and you end up having a a web ring or whatever the hell you want to call a Facebook group these days that talk about. Oh, this this is like the steamiest story I've ever heard about my two favorite characters that aren't actually canon. You're like, okay, I mean, I just did it for fun, but you want to talk about that, go right ahead. It's kind of creepy. It's kind of like, listen, I just made this because I was bored or I, I wanted to get it off my chest or whatever Whatever motivation you've got for writing a story is, is yours alone. And for people to get enamored by it because it has sex or it has a story that no one else pursued is like, great, good for you. But that person who did that probably doesn't care anymore because they did it as a form of catharsis or to get it off their chest. They, they don't want to take part in that uh, that action anymore. And yeah, that, or just a mental exercise, just some possibly. sort of creative, creative stretching of the muscles. Yeah, exactly. So uh, some people ask me to redo some of my videos. It's like, I don't really want to. I can because they're old and they suck and you know maybe they could be updated. But the facts are all the same. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that doing that 10 years ago. What, was, what did I say back then? I can't recall. Yeah. I'd, say if the, I'd say if the information holds, you don't, you don't really need to go redo it unless the audio is like really crappy. I actually... Yeah, it kind of is. It, comes, it kind of <laughs> makes me think of the whole remaking games and everything, the same game every five years. Oh, well. It's like, I don't know. Like, I... I think the la- I think five years graphics looks just fine to me. Some, I don't need to have it redipped. Some oh, games do need remakes. God, I have such a massive pet peeve with remakes. Yeah. I hate it when the different company does the remake than the people who originally made it. Oh, I hate that. Just look at uh, Resident Evil Four, which is not really a remake; it's more like a a reimagining. And then look at yeah. the remake of what was it, Final Fantasy VII this year. Which that is, actually supposedly changed a lot of things. It was dramatic change, uh, yeah, and that's not what people wanted. I was wanted. so mad when I found out that it wasn't a, a remake of the whole game because I didn't follow it whatsoever, and I was kind of curious about oh, it. Oh, God. So. Squaresoft, oh. the Japanese oh. work culture, and that company is notorious for decade-long productions, if not longer. <laughs> yeah. From the spirits within to uh, Kingdom Hearts. Like, it just... oh. Square Enix as a publisher always frustrates me too because they make some really janky decisions. Enix is one thing. It's Squaresoft that pisses me off. Yeah, anyway, I'll just keep going. And what about video games? There's still no real proof of any correlation between violent games and actual acts of violence. I recommend this video by MatPat for more context on that. No! Point. You know what's funny? There, there are... Um, there are there's a court case uh, about a guy. I don't remember what his name is, but it's like Amato or something like that. And he was addicted to a cam girl, essentially, that he would like call and stuff. And he was like, he, you know, he was a kind of a deadbeat guy, stayed at home with his family, and he kept taking their money to give to this cam girl. And then eventually he just killed all of them. Like he was just obsessed. Oh, wow. the, yeah. So it's like this whole, there's a good video by that chapter on it. That's where I heard about it. 
But um, yeah, so there there are things that I mean, like the the thing that I see and and the problem that I have is that people can say we don't have enough data. We don't have there's not enough scientific data to prove that violence and video games or sex and whatever can do that. And really, that's not that's not really taking context to, to, into consideration. People that are seeking out um, to satisfy certain urges, they're not all built equally. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think that there are, you know, the people that are like serial killers and they're watching porn are not the same kind of people that are just like casually into doing a little edgy stuff and they're watching the same porn. And so I think that yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. you know, so there's something that's going wrong here with this kind of thinking, the, 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 which isn't it's addressing the It's not the media interior. that is the thing what? to point the finger at basically no it's not really the media because the media is made available by people that are making the media and that's its own argument that that seems to be like its own thing why are you, why are you doing yeah. it? Are you making it for for profit are you making because you like it and you want a way to excuse it i mean what, what are we talking about so the way that i look at it is that underlying it what what is what is it that you're trying to seek why why are you why are you trying to do this what what is it that really is motivating you personally? Because you know it's funny when people who are saying, "Oh, it's not objective, it's not objective," are pointing to scientific data to try to prove their point. So what what is? Let's flip it on its head and say, what is it that this person personally is trying to justify with this uh, discussion? What, what what is it that you're trying to prove? What is, what kind of weird porn are you looking at that you want to <laughs> that you want people to go? <laughs> oh yeah, totally, totally, dude. <laughs> what are you trying to do? I'm not saying it's wrong, I just want to know. Something that requires much more engagement from the player than fanfic would from a reader can't convince the populace to go out and murder people. I'm not going to call well-tagged fix on AO3 a sex offender pipeline. Dead dove porn serves many purposes. For some, it problematic fanfic wrong. and fan art satisfies that general harmless porn? desire for dark forbidden fantasy fodder. For goodness sake, man, so... some people read dead dove porn to process their own trauma. This is a delicate topic worthy of case-by-case -case scrutiny, not delicate. a monster blanket you get to throw over everyone who's ever dared dig through the CD underbelly of AO3. And what then there's the video? other popular argument. <laughs> think of the children! Won't somebody please think of the children! Well, some of it is for children, right? These days are on a moral crusade. <laughs> yeah, some of the porn is for kids. make sure no child will ever <laughs> accidentally click on outlandish porn. This endeavor is about as fruitless as trying to stop her the Hoover Dam with chicken wire. The internet is not a foam play place for kids. Well, if you get enough I'm chicken not wire. your child's wait, mother. Wait, wait, it's wait, wait. my job. Was it, didn't she go on about safe spaces and wanting to feel safe and everything? And no, now she's saying, saying that, oh, that that's, that's the safe space is that you, your idea of the canon and that you know better than the creator and you know better than everybody else. That so, is creating a safe space. And then she, now she's saying that the internet isn't a safe space because she's reiterating that point, I think, and that she shouldn't be responsible for what her kids, you know, for what your kids are watching or whatever. But but like what I was trying to say is, is that a lot of the cartoons that she's using to show her examples are explicitly for children, like Gumball. If you're, if you're talking about porn while you're playing Gumball on the screen, something is... There are a few... Screws lose. There are circ a couple circuits misplaced, I think. <laughs> I think the uh, the tag refers to any sort of uh, sexual content that might make you uncomfortable. There's no actual definition for what's in it, but it could be anything. So, um, I don't. <laughs> Penis is in it. That makes me uncomfortable. Uh, probably more extreme than that, but I don't know. I, I don't know an <laughs> example. I'm just like there's no definition i'm just like looking at on reddit is like what is it like i have no idea there's no example but if you do a search you'll find a, a fanfic site that has a whole bunch of tags with with stories with it and it has a bunch of other tags so it's like the generic danger tag like this is extreme i guess as opposed to a rating system all right to make sure timmy doesn't plow through my tags and age restriction signs Timmy needs to learn how to read and curate his own internet experience. If he can't do that, then he's too young to be online. There's only one reasonable thing to do. Become better parents See, this is a kid's cartoon. In a sensible Question. Wouldn't that just counter her argument before about wanting a safe, about the safe space in, in fandoms? 
Message if, coming if in. You can't, if you can't create, you know, curate your internet to you f that it's safe for you, then, then you shouldn't be on it. I don't know. I don't this care. is this is getting awkward. She's talking about porn, and she's like, "There's this wonderful world of this and that, and there's all these tags to tell you what you're getting into." And she's extremely sensitive to all these comments from people telling her she's wrong or silly or dumb or whatever. It, it, that's what I mean. I'm so kind of contradictory in a weird way. And we're watching cartoons. It's like, where's like, what is what is your problem? Like, you're either very mature that you're smart enough to appreciate cartoons. Or you're extremely childish where you can't tolerate other people's opinions. I Yeah. It's both. It, you're, it's you're weird. Both, you're not allowing people to make porn and you're also wanting characters to be consistent within the canon. <laughs> that I I don't know. Also, I like how she went from talking about romance to talking about porn. Yeah. About characters. It was like like that's the next logical shipping conclusion. Is, equals no, porn. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. And then now you need to accept my Raylo porn. Like okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> we we, we have, have addressed that one earlier too. What so, else you got? So cartoons, More shipping, porn, porn uh, sexual fantasies. Don't say mean things about what I like because I can't take it. I, I safe spaces, but is only one room wide or whatever. You're like okay, stop contradicting my head cannon and ship. A sensible way. No. What matters to this video is the fact that many people take it upon themselves to don the cap of purity policemen and attack any fictional content they deem problematic. Okay, so she's. Mm, that's very yeah. interesting. She's, doesn't doesn't yeah. that happen all the time with everybody? Yeah, but now it sounds yeah. like she's advocating for all this stuff, all this extreme stuff, whatever it is. It's all fine. You can say whatever you like, and then the. The defenders of the fandom, like the lore experts or whatever, like this is bullshit. This is all crap, which it is because it's fan fiction. It's supposed to be slash horror slash sex, this and that. That's the point. And you have to res you have to say to yourself, oh, I'm reading crap, or I'm reading. <laughs> It, it is crap. Like I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, can I, <laughs> Smud, can I? Can I just? I'm gonna say a hot take. I don't think I've ever read really like quality fan fiction. Like ninety nine percent of it exactly. has been absolute garbage written by people that are just amazed by what they've read. And you know what I mean. Same. That's not to say that there there isn't good writers of said fan fiction. Like there's you know right. obviously you have a standard of course. And yeah. You, but but it's still crap. Like you're still you're still digging holes in the ditch and you're saying look at this magnificent hole. I've. It's like <laughs> it's 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 dirt, dude. Like what are you talking about? Like yeah, you could make the most amazing hole in the ground, but it's still a hole in the ground. So. <laughs> that's a great way to put it yeah it's just like we uh, you have to respect the medium for what it is and evaluate it there on those standards alone don't compare it to like a movie or or a, or a screenplay that has gone through editors and has been cleaned up and you know whatever whatever your standards for writing are these are totally different things so appreciate the smut appreciate the adult content for the the right format, for what it's worth, but don't compare apples and oranges. Subscribe yeah, to Smut Boy on Porntreon. Yeah, Porntreon. Yes, is that a thing? <laughs> no, it's not. I just made it up. You made, okay, I, I can't tell these. Throw your shekels at him. I can't tell him. That's what OnlyFans should have called itself. Porntreon. <laughs> <laughs> service of a greater moral good. But again, the concept of problematic fiction is extremely subjective. No so? matter where you land on feminist sex wars, the what? sequel, what? we can all agree there's an what? argument to be had here about what constitutes as too far, porn-wise. But as we've discussed already, current fandom culture doesn't take well to maybes. There's always a right and a wrong answer, and the wrong people are always the scum of the earth. True. So how do you decide <laughs> no, who's kidding. wrong? With no solid metric to determine the morality of problematic fictional content, no solid line or chart to proclaim a piece of fiction harmless or dangerous, Purity Police fans turn to the only code they can trust, their own ethics. And a lot of the time, these people's what does that ethics mean? boil down to what does and doesn't make them personally uncomfortable. 
Mm. I probably don't have to tell you that this scenario spells disaster. Today, people base what's morally egregious not on canonical facts or facts or studies. Can any one of you guys explain to me what scenario she means? I don't know about you, but I get my morality from studies and facts. You know what I mean? I'm trying to... I, I think what she's trying to say is similar to like someone who's not a, a fan of something, like just like the average Joe, and sees like a convention of all these geeks and running around in costumes. Like, what the hell is going... Like, you have no idea who these people are and where they're coming from because it looks like a bunch of aliens running around. And actual people in the fandom looking at other people in the fandom as the, in the same way and going, who are these crazy offshoots who are extreme on the, on the made up relationships? And she's getting very sensitive to that. And I'm like, well, yeah, cause those things aren't real and you're off on your own tangent world where no one else is except for some other weirdos who thought had the same thoughts and you found them online somehow. Moral puritanism is not talking about or not wanting the fan fiction stories about porn of characters, <laughs> right? Am I getting this right? It's like so many, she, she's trying not to say anything, but trying to say everything. So this is all very backwards. Just say what you say exactly. What, I want to hear okay, what she I means. What does she her. want? What does she want us to do? Does she want us to accept her fan fiction or what? I don't get it. What do you want? I'm just glad that someone else thinks that because this has been my problem with this entire video is I have no idea what the hell she's trying to say. The topic is toxicity and she only used the term once, I think. And we're just jumping. She's just, she's just went on tangent upon tangent upon tangent. Have you noticed that the female people we've dis we've discovered on YouTube and are reviewing do that sort of idea to idea to idea and I know this is a common thing I've said about women I've met that they just that's how their minds work I think that's just a female I don't think it has to do with a fandom or or a passion it's just women's minds work this way oh god <laughs> an, 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 anecdotal thing when my sister did an exchange semester in Ireland she sent me a text to correct them oh god they were so hard to understand <laughs> I know that it really was. It was written that way, just idea to idea to idea, nothing explaining the idea, just going, continuing, just continuing, continuing. It's not just like casual conversation, but if someone is relating information to you, like a story, and they'll just go off, and they'll they'll it'll be the same topic, but it's just on another story entirely. You're like, what are you what are you talking about? Gas prices. So, uh, what, what are you, you know what I've noticed? I've noticed that people that aren't having a lot of sex tend to talk about sex a lot and want it a lot. <laughs> I don't know if that's something that anybody else has noticed. It's people it's about desires want the things in they can't have. It's very lonely here, in the and North that's why people. I yeah. keep that's why I keep thinking about a flying DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. I was gonna say is. Uh, Something my, my family has always told me is, is that women's minds are like spaghetti and men's minds are like boxes. Or waffles, I think, was the analogy. But basically, they're, they can jump from topic to topic to topic. And rabbit so, no, I have no idea what to think about that. The one thing <laughs> both, <laughs> both, both have topic topic to topic. So there's one thing both have in common. I just wanted they're waffles. Tasty. That's what yeah, I, me I too. I was like syrup and waffles. waffles. I want syrup and, <laughs> and berries and some whipped cream or something. That's well, not I'll, I'll get on your OnlyFans and airmail you some. www.sendmewaffles.com <laughs> slash OnlyFans, <laughs> comma, <laughs> you, simps, you, 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 HTTP, you, you WX. Fun, but that might actually be a thing. Sendmewaffles.com. It's, it's, what, what is it? Uh, what, what do they call these fetishes again? Wa it's waffle dumb. <laughs> give in to the, the dominant waffle. Give in to the waffle. Okay. It's got to be it's, the. It's uh, delicious. Damn it. Now I want waffles too. Why did. That's the power of, my, of magic, of repetition. See if I can just say waffles. Crispy, golden, fluffy waffles. <laughs> I've actually, actually a nice waffle maker upstairs. I might go make myself some waffles. It's, the, uh, it's, it's either the, the liege waffles or the uh, the Belgian waffles for me. So uh, I think I, think I like um, a brand or something like that. It's a giant bear on the cover. What? A bear? Yeah, I don't know. It's, that's, what the, that's what it's at the grocery store. I, and there's a bear. Okay, I wouldn't trust waffles made by bears, man. I, you gotta be careful about that. Do you have a problem with bears? Are you bearist? 
I don't know. They might be trying to attack me. You never can tell. Bears don't attack people. That's silly. Yeah, you know why you never hear any tales? Because the bears always win. Okay? You can't trust them. They always have kill. You, have you ever seen that, uh, ever seen that, like, little meme? It's like, uh, this guy doing martial arts before a bear. It's like all these steps, and then it's like, and you wake up at the end because you realize it's a bear and it just killed you. No, I haven't seen that. But I that does sound funny. But on what makes them upset? Take Sheath, for example. And yes, I will reference this again because I had to go through it, damn it, and you will feel my frustration. People are going to read Shiro and Keith's relationship as brotherly. If they're very sold on that interpretation, the notion of a Keith and Shiro ship may make them uncomfortable. And uncomfortable, by this emotional metric, means morally wrong. No, see, I didn't watch it, the show all the way through. through. Wasn't it supposed to be bro brotherly, or am I wrong? Well, did they did they kiss each other and say "I love you, baby"? See you next Tuesday or whatever. I don't know, but uh, knowing but they, how then horrible it, it, what I'm saying is, not to be, might actually happen. It's very hard to miss intentional, implicit, or explicit romance in a story because you, writers usually like to highlight that. So if you have to read into a something. To the point where somebody can interpret friendship with romance, then something's not right. Someone's misreading the signals here, because like in a real situation ship, let's say you're you have somebody that looks at somebody as a friend, and the other person looks at somebody as a romantic interest. Those two things have to match, or else it doesn't work. So if there is such a relationship, then it has to all be copacetic. The audience has to be able to understand that and see that. Otherwise, it's kind of bad writing. Well, this if is, it's so subtle that you can interpret it as a friendship. This is why we I love... I don't know if it's actually there. This is why we love watching Maggie Mae Fish with her fixes for episode three of Star Wars. She thought that it would make much more sense and be much more entertaining to her. That oh, it's another o crazy person. That, that Obi-Wan was actually having an affair. With uh, okay, so the answer to my question is yes, this is another crazy person. Oh, oh, God. oh, this is the crazy person. Yeah, she's amazing. She is truly a gem that uh, we found on YouTube, and we just can't. Well, I, I can't get enough of her, but we have to limit ourselves to once a month. So <laughs> we, uh, we don't drive everyone else crazy. But yeah, no, these these people exist. Oh, it drives me crazy up up the wall. No, no doubt, no doubt, because there's something so manic about the way that she delivers everything. Like she's like she's talking to her. Her son, who the father left, and then she's like dumping all her problems on him <laughs> while she makes him like a smoothie or something and smashing all of the ingredients together. That's the vibe that I get from Maggie Mae Fish. Like she's complaining about the world's problems in some sort oh, of yeah. giant monologue while but, doing something. But there's this underlying the, the, yeah. sexuality to everything, and it's just creepy as hell. <laughs> and you and don't know like, well, why. And she's so talking weird. and she's talking about like <laughs> Zack Snyder's potential <laughs> hatred of Palestine. You're like, what are you talking yeah. about? What's her name? What's her name? Okay. I was questioning, you know, I, I went on this, like I went camping and, and I didn't bring my phone and that kind of thing. And I, I was just like by myself with the world. And I came back to the internet. I was like, oh my God, it, more, more crazy people on the internet. <laughs> I don't know if I can keep doing this, but yeah, I get it now. It's like, there's, it's really like case studies of people. Like how, how is it that somebody can project so much onto content? That's what I really feel like I'm engaging in all the time when we're talking about people. It's like it's like a psychoanalysis through somebody's work. It's like a symposium. It is strange. Oh, I, I should show, I should join in one of those because oh. I, I have a high tolerance for stuff like that. Yeah, no, I, I don't anymore. It, it hurts my body. Like for for people to make because it, it all feels bad faith. Like it's it's not like they're trying to engage with um, people that they disagree with on something. And see the points and, and and involve the concept. It's Message like we're trying in. to like gatekeep something because it's a war over identity of some power system or something. I don't I don't understand I, I why think, it has to be like that. The, the big reason why I have a high tolerance for that is because we had I had to deal with similar absolutely insane shit in uni that were part uh, were just seen as uh, real academic papers. And then if you read that stuff and think this is accepted as academia, you start going insane. But then when you're like, oh, it's just a YouTube video. Okay, I can deal with that. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's a new way of looking at things. Jeez. It's just YouTube. They're just crazy. They're just fine. 
Yeah, no, but seriously, yeah, if you see the same thing, if you see the same thing taught in a in a in an academic environment, it just seems way more frustrating to me, and I had to deal with that for years, and so I'm like, oh, it's it's just on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Um, here is Joe Crazy. Consistency, what's that? That was, uh, I think, uh, 20 minutes ago. Sorry about that, Joe. Can't remember what we were talking about then. Uh, Joe Crazy again. <laughs> oh, please, Smud. There is no such thing as platonic relationships in fiction. Yeah, I know. Everyone's got to be <laughs> yeah. coming on to someone else. And it's just... You know, I, that, I've seen that a lot, and I, I think that's like pent up sexual frustration as much as yeah. I hate to say it. It's like, oh this just wanna see Goku and Vegeta fuck. Oh <laughs> it's like what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> Can you chill? What why are you so hyped up about this now weird you, shit to the point you feel motivated to write it and, I, and draw it and I, I'm sure want people to accept it. I'm sure I mean are. I don't care if they write and draw it or whatever as long as they don't force it upon the rest of us. I, but I didn't say I can't, like I give a shit. I just think it's I'm just like why yeah, <laughs> what I are know. you doing? I, I'm sure there are some homoerotic feelings that guys have watching those shows, but I think the majority of this comes from women and their love of the romance genre or subgenres thereof and th their desire to write fan fiction about that. And I think this video is largely an expression of the author's uh, problems with people reacting to her passions and why she thinks that she has to defend herself for whatever reason. So. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Heidi, hi. Hey, voice, how's it going? Hello. Hey, voice. Hello. I'm good. Boys in the radio. How's your I how's your, your last week of Christmas? How's it do how's it going? Uh barely started celebrating yet. Oh really? I thought you'd be uh all with the, the Christmas spirit and all the other things that go on uh, this time of year. Uh, well, I don't, I don't stop working until the twenty fourth, and then I'm back to work on Boxing Day. So, yeah, but because you're part of the, uh, what's the industry? You're part of the food and drink industry, right? So, yeah, lots of uh, lots of people to make happy, and that's your job. Wait, what well, day is what day is Boxing Day? Uh, it's this Saturday. Uh. Is that like a special day in the food and drink industry? Or I don't know why that question popped up. No. Um, I mean, all, all things considered, probably not going to end up serving anybody because we're going back into another lockdown. Yeah. So. The, the virus has mutated. It's now yeah. turning people into cyber zombies. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, Look out below. Oh. Everything oh, is going you, wrong. Did you hear that uh, people traveling from London to Germany... Uh, all non-German citizens have to be tested for COVID, but German citizens can just walk through. That's because <laughs> Germans are immune, apparently. <laughs> They've been they living have in the Sweden. superior Aryan blood. <laughs> They've been I, in Sweden oh all this time. <laughs> I was going to make that joke. <laughs> it's like, is that inappropriate? Nah, we're fine. Of course it's inappropriate. That's why it's we have like... to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like What's the point of being appropriate when, when you're trying to be entertaining? What are you? We're content on Scientologist the, on, because everyone oh, seems to have like some, some like most of the politicians seem to be struck with like Alzheimer's, so they just change their decision daily. So we have to stay on the edge of our seat just to make sure we're doing the right thing. Well, every time you notice if a politician is doing something wrong, then they, then they got to like act out now. I've noticed that pattern. So like Gavin Newsom or whatever. Or or Eric Garcetti, I don't even remember. Uh, no, the the mayor of L.A. basically did like a thing where the counties or, or the city what wasn't allowed to uh, to open the restaurants, outdoor mm -hmm. dining or whatever. And then one of the cities, uh, Pasadena, I think, was like, "No, we'll stay open. We are we got our own health board. We're fine. We're fine here. We don't need you." And then the the governor went, "No, everybody must go lock down." I was like, "Oh shit, they're working together. <laughs> they're killing us." They're killing yeah, us, Larry. But we can't have people actually in the um, in the actual building. But we got a right. beer garden, so people go in one way, get their drink, go out the other, and like we charge a charge extra. But if you come back and return the uh, the cups for us to wash them, we give you money back. 
Oh, that's nice. That's that's it, really uh, nice. There's there's a lot of places in Orange County that have refused to lock down. There's places in California and all other places that have refused to lock down, but it's so stupid because it's because there's because they don't have the they don't have the balls to go 100% lockdown, which like would actually make sense. You know, like people in hazmat suits delivering, fe- you know, rations to people that have all been cleansed and stuff I, to I make can't... sure that nobody goes anywhere. Message Full coming. lockdown. England prevails. Uh, they, they're not. They're not going to do that. They're going to half-ass it, and then all the big market brands will be able to survive, yeah. and all the small businesses are fucked. And it's such a depressing thing to see because then they're like, "All right, and then we're going to build back better with the Great Reset." And I'm like, "Great." I read this conspiracy theory before when I had a foil hat on. Now the hat is off. Now I have a foil mask, and it's doing nothing. <laughs> in uh, in in Illinois, they uh, they have this thing where it's like you can't have uh, inside dining, and of course it's winter, so it's freezing. So, oh, uh, so so some of the restaurants, what they've done is that they've constructed. Uh, there was like this uh, Mexican restaurant we were staying on our way to uh, Indiana. It was south of Ur- Urbana, and uh, they <laughs> they basically built a wooden like hut on the outer perimeter of the restaurant, they put in some space heaters and they just started serving people that way. Yeah, like, exactly. That is the most absurd. That's like, I have like the best way to yeah, like the best I'm loophole I've ever seen exploitation in my life. Restaurant I, owners are basically now like the people that make pistols and guns that are have like gun braces and stuff. They like change the definitions of what the words are. So like if it has an, if you have a brace for your arm, you can have a, a shoulder thing for your rifle, and it's a pistol. It's not a rifle, like that kind of thing. Oh, you can <laughs> have a bump stock if you have a brace for your arm. Is that the justification? It, so it's, it's, it's not anymore. Bump stocks are officially banned arbitrarily, which is so fucking bizarre. But, like, all these rules that are just inconsistent. And then, bizarre. Glib, what are you talking about? Law well, okay. is 100% correct all the time, and you're wrong for not accepting it. Well, if that were true, then I'd be the king. But the point is, is that <laughs> what, what happened? The, they made this claim that there was like a seventy percent more deadly viral strain or whatever, and then there were a bunch of scientists in the UK that were like, uh, <clears throat> uh, "Could we get a citation on that? Like, could you? Wh- where did you get that information from?" <laughs> it's like it, that—that's not a consensus. Like they—they they just are making statements now, and I, I hope they go. I hope they just make, they go full throttle. You know what I mean? Like. If you leave your house, you will die instantaneously. It's now radioactive COVID, and you'll get your hair will fall out, and you'll start to poop out little alien men, and uh, you'll start seeing visions of General Patton arguing for us to kill the commies or something like that. I, yeah, I just want them to go fourth, full on. We've we've got a fourth tier of lockdown now. Tier five is going to be Boris Johnson walking around, rugby tackling people off the streets to get them back indoors. <laughs> oh, I want that to happen! I, I want that to happen! Footage of that. You will now be oh, ordered to wear uh, seven masks over your penis. One thing that really frustrates me is that. The, well, there are two two aspects of that. He, over here in Switzerland, some authorities have told people to spy on their neighbours. <laughs> yeah. and report them if too many people meet but on the other hand I've heard from quite a lot of, of co-work and everything that when people are sick technically speaking the police is supposed to check up on you from time to time to see if you're actually in quarantine they don't do it they don't care it's because they're so... like why, why should we waste time with checking up on you it's so mixed messages at the moment It's, it's Boris Johnson might as well come out and go enjoy an extended Christmas but keep it short Go see your yeah, family, yeah. <laughs> but, but don't invite anyone into your house. <laughs> Celebrate it, Christmas. Don't enjoy Christmas. Gather and around then, the fire with the family in the cold. Where uh, on the family. internet? <laughs> yeah, don't and, say, say hello to everybody and give them a hug, but don't touch them. And then at the uh, end of the year, we will or will not something or other. <laughs> wasn't there, wasn't there a school in the USA where they were allowed to wrestle but not shake hands? What? Really? <laughs> I heard something like that. Yeah. Oh dear. All I know is that there's a weird one where they said that you couldn't have sex with people outside of your house or something. They wanted to cut down on dating. <laughs> 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 uh, only sex with people in your household, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then there was an even creepier one that was like I think it was Chicago or something where they said guidelines, COVID guidelines for orgies. Or, or oh, gatherings where you was, might be having sex. That was, was like, uh, what? 
What world am I living in? I they, can't go to church, but they, I can go to the OG. They specifically said one in either Alberta or British Columbia about anal sex. It was like, oh, that's <laughs> interesting. I'll always remember to wear a mask over your penis. <laughs> <having> <laughs> <anal sex. laughs> oh, I, re I, rem I remember one. I forgot where the politician was, but suggesting people put on their masks in between bites from food. Oh, I oh love that yeah, one. that was that oh. one's so fun. Watching people eat with the masks, and like, oh, it's it's just it's it's so funny to see. There's a bunch of people walking around with a mask, and then there's just somebody sitting there, and they're just chowing down without the well, mask on. The best like, what, one. What is happening? The best one is the I, lone driver in the car wearing a mask. That always gets me. I saw, I saw a guy in a Lamborghini, a guy like in this super nice sports car, and he was wearing a mask. And I was like, what? How are you so like? How do you have all this money and you can't? figure out that that's not going to do anything like like wearing the, I, I i knew i thought at the beginning that wearing a mask i was like okay everything around me is infected but at this point how do you still believe that i don't know i don't know one i think my favorite one i especially see it often because well i work at a museum so i i see more people on the regular uh just today we, we didn't have too many visitors but we still had some visitors and the amount of people i saw Wearing their masks underneath their nose was just very funny to me. All right, uh, Taker six ten. How does a disembodied voice serve food and drink? You know, we don't we don't ask how. This... Uh, I, it's very easy. I just get the waitresses to do it. Oh, that's... you just con wait. <laughs> you I mean, control them. That's one way to do it. Uh, I, I control I mean, them through tell them. I, I control them through paying them. Through possession. Oh, my yes. boss tells me. <laughs> possession. <laughs> oh, no. Not, not, not the helplessness or, or dominance or, or some other extreme. Uh, it's dominance through money. Oh. That's a good fantasy. I like that fantasy. Mm. <laughs> the, the only language people understand. <laughs> the only language that people understand is the universal language of money. And beer. All right, let's keep on going. Therefore, it is an act of public service to call out any sheath shippers and chase them out of your safe space. <laughs> Feeling yeah, it does make me a little uncomfortable. Another example. I don't like kissing people that have beards. It's a little weird. Through a scandal dubbed Ballgate, where someone <laughs> caused That's a fan animation. Oh dear, here we go. Have you guys ever heard of? Has a big giant beard. Have you guys ever heard of Warrior Cats or a whole book series? Oh. Okay. Yeah, no, we, I, I don't know anything about it. Is this, is this the fandom that she's she's about to ruin for you, by any chance? Uh, no, I don't really care. I just find it funny that there was a controversy, and now she knows there's more, because the controversy was not about headcanon. It's, it's something completely different. So uh, what is she going to say? I don't know, but it was pretty much just someone saying something on social media who, uh, you know, they, they want people to be, what is what is the term that, J.K. Rowling is. Uh, she's a, a nerf. What I don't even know what the hell. Turf. Turf. Trans exclusionary turf. radical there feminist. So someone was defending There's J.K. A Rowling. Forever. Yeah, I know. Stupid. Y yes. So this person who used to be a writer or is a ghostwriter for this series was defending J.K. Rowling, and a lot of people knew of that. And said, oh, we're not going to read your books anymore. So that's that is what actually happened. So I don't know what she's going to get into. Covered a frame or two where a cat's balls were visible. Oh, the horror! A balls? cat drawn with correct anatomy for oh. less than three milliseconds of screen time. Do you yeah, case, I don't really care about that at all. The balls made them uncomfortable, and that meant the animator must be morally uh, wrong. Then again, I'm not looking that hard. Harassment of the animator and a wave of Twitter arguments. I'm not overreacting. Screaming is comedy. The harsh truth, lads. Sometimes things that offend you are allowed to exist. These uh -oh. fictional artifacts. That was a. Yeah. That was a really good. There's one but, quote. But we're not allowed to exist because we say mean things. Remember. Ah, uh, why are you still? Why do you keep using kids cartoons while you're talking Irritating about porn? The shit out of me. Hey, these cat balls. Cut to kids show. <laughs> yeah. Cat hey, balls. 
opaque pornography that makes you un uncomfortable. Look at this kid's show. What's worse is the yeah. creators of uh, Steven Universe actually encourage that kind of thing. And I'm like, oh god. Mm, yeah, jam. Mm. Uh, what is it, Rebecca Sugar? <laughs> the author. She's like, it's like, yeah, go crazy with it. I'm like, oh, please no. Yeah. Stop. Oh. There was that show that she showed. It was called the uh, the uh, Gay and Wondrous Life of Caleb Gallo, I think. And that what that one scene where it's the most memorable line in the show. It's about sometimes the more expensive things are not as good, which was a great line as far as philosophy goes. But the actual show is obviously a bunch of crazy tropes about being gay and having gay friends and all the crazy stuff that happens involving that. But the fact she didn't tell us that line is like, oh, that's a great line. Just say the line because that's meaningful and has universal appeal. It's like, no, no, no. It's a show about gays. Okay. The, the audience is basically for gay guys that have never met other gay guys. Do they live in the Arctic or on the moon? It's California. Yes. I think it's California. Okay. <laughs> Do they live oh. in the Middle East? Trust me, there's plenty of gay guys in the Middle East. Yeah, but not openly, I think. Well, in Afghanistan, they're pretty open about it as long as they're, you know. There, we, there's a reason we call it Man Love Thursdays when we were over there. Ooh. Oh god! <laughs> what? So, their weekend uh, in Afghanistan it starts on Thursdays. So the joke is, is that all of our uh, local nationals on the base would go off, and you know they would <clears throat> on Thursday evenings. That was the way they kicked off their weekends. Plus, there's Bosher boys and a whole bunch of old creepy culture. Yeah, I heard about stuff. Yeah, anyone tells you that there's not a the, the Middle East con condones homosexuality is they're they're tr they're true. It's just if you're in power, it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right then. Aren't actually in your safe house. If they're porn and they've been posted correctly, then they're tagged behind an age block door in someone else's basement. There will even be stuff that squicks you out, but doesn't pose a general threat to the community. Take me for <laughs> Pom Poco. Is that Twix you out? Was that a verb? What was the verb? Use it again. Twix you. I, I don't know what she said. It was something like something that freaks you out, I guess. But I didn't get the word. And it doesn't matter. It just <clears throat> random thing. By the way, I totally want one of those uh, doors that are like disguised as bookshelves. There's a company that does that in the in the Midwest. I want a dis. I want a door disguised as a door. Ooh. So when I opened it up. <laughs> What would be brilliant is if you have a bookshelf that disguises a door. No, it's a door, and then you open it up. There's another door, and then there's a wall. There's nothing there. <laughs> I, I want the I want the bookshelf disguised as a door. Like, they pull the door. They're like, oh no, it's another door. Pull from the door. They run into a brick wall. No, <laughs> it's like, you, you, ha you know, you have a door, and then when you open it, it's a bookshelf. <laughs> Yeah, I want to. I want a fake. I want a fake bookshelf door that opens, and there's nothing there, and it's like, haha, got you. Hello, I'm Glib, and welcome to real fake doors. <laughs> we got real <laughs> fake doors. Everybody you got this door. You got red doors. You got any kind of door you want. Come on down. Real Glib's real fake doors. They won't open. None of them open. Open. None of them open. You can't even turn the knob. This you keyhole is just painted price over for you. You know Extra when you open the door price. and you get scared because there's another room you go into and you panic? Well, not here. <laughs> Welcome to real <laughs> fake doors where, where you can't even come in the building because we're, we're really good with our products. Oh, God. Then somebody hires clips and he makes every door in the house a fake door and so they never can leave. <laughs> they you won't take no for an answer. We'll, co we'll come to your house when you're sleeping. Take out your doors. <laughs> Replace them with fake doors. <laughs> what about the windows, though? Come on down, you can't come in the store because the doors don't work. Help me, I've been trapped here for three years. <laughs> if you don't like it, doesn't matter, we'll put you to sleep. You, the, you, you, we'll take, we, we want your doors. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm the fairy for your teeth, like, but, but your, your, your teeth for your doors. <laughs> Do you have anything for windows? We don't talk about windows. Feelings <laughs> are actually doors as well, fake doors. Okay. Me really uncomfortable. That was a great tangent. And you know why? Yep, the balls. 
so you oh, know, that I, film was so fun. I don't watch this film. What was if that? I don't want to see references to Pompoco on my Tumblr dash. I can oh, ask people to Tom tag their Poco. posts or block any users who refuse. Just, just to give context, I th if I remember correctly, it's a, uh, it's a Studio Ghibli film that is about uh, Tanukis and uh, Tanukis and foxes learning to live among humans. And in Japanese mythology, Tanukis do shape shift their balls into different things. Ooh. That's their tricks. And, so, right? and it's it's actually it's actually a really fun film. Sounds dumb. Aren't Tanukis in Japanese mythology supposed to be like trickster spirits or something like that? Exactly, yeah, they are. All of the Studio it, Ghibli films are good, even the bad ones. It, yeah, it, it basically it, delves it, into the fox have the, the them having an incredibly hard time being human and they constantly stress out so they create this they have this little uh, hideaway in the forest where they just are themselves and have fun. Sounds like a metaphor for humanity uh, getting back to nature, finding itself. Mother Gaia must be protected. And now, how can I lose that in my shipping fanfiction? Hmm. You know. Now, I have not seen the film in a while, so I could be a bit wrong, but I, I think that's the gist of it. I, I think the, uh, the polymorphing testicles would be uh, more than enough there, Glib. <laughs> yeah, that, well, we haven't even we haven't seen what genetic augmentation with tentacles we can add to that in the hentai. Oh. You have, we have no idea the, the capabilities. We can take this to the next to the next level. Can you imagine we can, the we can make it absolutely Solid disgusting, Smug. Can you imagine the mod support for cyberpunk? Of all the people, oh, we gotta put tentacles in there. <laughs> oh, it's happening! It's gonna it, as soon as they uh, as soon as they release the game uh, oh, yeah. from its uh, beta state. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah. Fuse. I'm also repulsed by sex on TV. Always have been. Wait, it what? It doesn't matter whether it's consensual or not. If what? there's what? a sex scene on screen, I'll hide behind a pillow or Why? leave the room. What? But I'm not going to claim that sex scenes are somehow harmful or dangerous to the masses. The Wait a second. She's against visual depictions of sex. On TV, yes. But she frequently reads slash... Thick. I, I, it could be a degree. I I don't know. The only thing I could say to that is it could just be a degree of separation. I, but I'm I'm trying here. to think of maybe it's like because it's more imaginative and it's more in my mind. Therefore, I can do what I want with it. I'm in control. Whereas it's, now it's reduced to whatever animated. Therefore, it's bad. Well, so to compare, I guess the only thing I could say is like there. Okay, so like gruesome depictions of violence on tv i i don't watch myself i'm not i'm not a fan i read about it or even play a video game about it and i don't really i don't really mind it as much if it's a realistic like live action kind of thing but if it's like animated or a video game or cel shaded right but yeah that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't just bother me as much but if it's you know live action like there's definitely some scenes in game of thrones where i just had to kind of like turn away for a minute because i was like Oof, that looks nasty okay but we're talking about a genre she is familiar with and is comfortable with at least in the written format but once you visualize it for her it's bad that I guess doesn't... the only thing i can offer is just degrees of separation but it's weird i'm not gonna mm -hmm. Because there, the thing is, like, if you were to watch, I think there's some animes out there. I'm sure they've been around for at least thirty years, where there's sex and violence, and it's hardcore. And that's usually yep. these, these are usually B movies or B plots and you know silly, yeah. silly stories, which is exactly what fan fiction is. So I don't know why you get offended by seeing that done in a higher production. So yeah, I, yeah. Oh, oh god, the <laughs> wait. If I remove. I that reminds me of, a, of a, an obscure Japanese show that that uh, uh, somebody once showed me. I think it's called like Tokyo Gore Police or something like that. And the gore in that is so over the fucking top that you just can't stop laughing your ass off. Helsing is like that. Helsing uh, Ultimate. Oh, for sure. No, it but is, that one is it live is action. Important. It's it's not animated. Oh, really? It's live oh. action. Yeah. Oh, you're saying it was an anime that was adapted into live action? It's no, no, no. It was. It's just a live action show. That's just so incredible. It's it. It's kind of anime esque, as in they tr probably tried to resemble the you know the the hallmarks of anime, but it's live action. Huh. It's so ridiculous. So they try to uh, replicate anime tropes. 
Yeah. Wow. Interesting. That can go many ways. <laughs> All right. Cool. I, I just I just remembered it being so absolutely over the top that I laughed my ass off when somebody oh, yeah. showed me clips from it. I can't remember what it was. There was a live action one of a of a what are those name it's a Japanese term for superhero? Uh like not Sailor Moon, but those that kind of genre. Magical school rules? Is that what you're not talking about? Not quite. This is like the Sane not Sanin, but they're like for kids. But this uh, is uh, Shonen. Is it? Sh I don't know, but it's basically uh, an R-rated kind of show because you have these, you know, the, the typical big titty, tall chick, but she's got the mask on, so you don't know who she is. But she's she fights crime. It's that kind of superhero story. And it was live action. I can't remember what the hell it was called. I I saw like a a poster as I was going through Google Images. I'm like, what the? Oh yeah, okay. It, <laughs> definitely an anime, and it got translated to live action. So I think I know the genre you speak of. Super Sentai. I think that's the one. Sentai, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sentai. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm like racking my, my massive anime knowledge treasure trove and being like, what is he talking about? Yeah, I'm not familiar. It, definitely Sentai, yeah. But it's it's like a parody adult version, but not like like XXX adult. It's like R-rated adult. <laughs> I guess. I have never actually seen it, so I don't know. There probably is an X-rated version out there anyway. Oh, there's there's Message Bogue. In. Thank you, Bogue. Patching it through. Uh, half woman with alligator head for... Oh, uh, thanks. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what did he say? Well, he, he's our anime uh, guru here, Bogue. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Kecko Cayman, I think it's... Oh, my God. There's so many. I don't know. They sound familiar. I just don't know. Anyway, we're off topic. Let's keep going. The wider fandom community realizes that each viewer has different squicks and triggers and that there's no objective way to determine when something fictional becomes dangerous, be that thing cat balls or hardcore fanfic porn, Wait. the better off we'll be. Where you draw the line in terms of bad content will always be different from my line or from your mom's or your next door neighbor's. Fandom is a community yeah, no, but filled with unique pornography people is with pornography. different comfort levels. I believe a lot of the upheaval we endure today comes down to each viewer's obligation to wrangle fandom into a shape that suits their personal moral compass. Or, again, their desire to only populate their safe space with things that make them comfortable. Okay, so you'll notice oh. Oh my that goodness. there's a common thread between <laughs> Best reaction. all these theories, and that's comfort. People want to be comfortable because the world is fucking shit right now. And part of why I think this has gotten. This was in last year, September 2019. So I don't know what she's. Message oh, boy. Like it's getting, the only thing I can think of is it's getting close to the election time, the primaries. It is the that's... winter equinox right now. September. <laughs> Kilauea has blown open, my friends. Wait, what was it that last word you said? Kilauea. For Saturn to return. Yeah, Kilauea in Honolulu. The, oh. the, uh, the active volcano on the main island. We are reaching a good time, my brothers. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, Ronin Harushin, thanks. Cutie Honey, uh, also there's Tokasatsu. I don't know. I don't know those, but I think Bo got in the chat. It was uh, Keiko Kamen. That's the one I was. I remember seeing the uh, the poster for. It. I don't speak these moon runes. I don't know. The yeah, I don't remember honestly. Oh, that's why you got me around. I can help translate some of it, but I have never heard of Keiko Kamen, unfortunately. So. It, it, Arigato gozaimasu. It was a live action thing. Uh, so. Oh no. Or you know, lam. I can do it in Arabic yeah. or Japanese. Arabic because, probably easier. Like, the world's always been shit. Oh my god. But it's especially shit right now. What? <laughs> and the more shit the world is. Is this turned into a therapy session? Like refuge in fandom, in fantasy. And people are totally surrounded by fandom all day, all Not night. Not surrounded by it all day. I'm surrounded by packages all day. Iowa and Rhodes. Tumblr and Twitter and oh. Netflix and. Wherever else you watch your favorite show, 
you have the option to be can you sit up please does anyone else tilt world? their head when people do this i don't like, think we can take her seriously yeah, yeah this is getting silly you have the option of freeing yourself from the corporate chains of these fandoms don't give in to the call of duty no <laughs> it's just toxic it's just toxic okay sbmm you're just gonna keep saying buzzwords until something makes sense it's you look man Free the fans, man. Peace. Make make peace, not war. I like to think the other way around, though. Make war, not peace. I'm sure she has that's, a good point in there somewhere. That way. I just don't know why she's taking this approach to rambling. So has weird. She has she spoke about like the Steven Universe fandom and, and no. how they encourage people to kill themselves if they draw characters slightly differently? Oh, my um, God. No, she wouldn't bring that up. No. Well, there we go. She's probably a fan of them, so why why would she ever bring up the dark side? Oh yeah, the first half of her video I'm was just Steven sure Universe. That, I'm pretty sure one of there was a, a little artist who was a big fan of one of the characters in Steven Universe, and and I'm going entirely off like what I can remember from hearing other people speak about it. Um, but they drew a character who was, you know, a a a, a fatter character, and they they drew her thin. And then she was in like the Steven Universe fan base basically ravaged her Twitter and, and her. Ooh, yeah, I remember let that. Let me guess why they ravaged her. They they said that they were uh, denying her 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 beauty of her being being an aerophatic. Yeah, they 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 were angry because she drew her attractive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's. They, they tried to get her off the internet and also then to commit suicide, basically. Oh my god! Message yeah, it, fan, fans up. fans of any fan, there are just zealots in every fandom, but there are some particular fan bases that just some for whatever reason breed it. Mm. All right, it here comes is here is Ronhe Rushin again. Thank you, sir. Uh, to, Tokusatsu is the live action superhero entertainment that consists of Kamen Rider and Super Sentai. Okay, that makes more sense. So that's a, a, a subgenre I was I was referencing, but. Yeah. All these, yeah, we're talking about Japan, so they have all kinds of media that the West does not even have access to, let alone understands. So, so people say, well, don't confuse fiction with reality. That becomes your reality. No, no, it doesn't. That's stupid. no, it doesn't. Well, okay, this is starting to get to a little creepy. It's starting to get a little worrisome. Yeah. If you start saying, oh, I love, I can't wait to walk outside and act like Commander Shepard or some nonsense, you're like, okay. You're, you're you too far down. You having the uncanny <laughs> effect on your face and being stuck in radio conversation cut, cut scenes? Yeah, stuck in an elevator with radio conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. I don't think fandoms would be half as toxic if the people making the content weren't toxic themselves. And then uh, also on top of that, being able to manage a fan group is really difficult because people just fucking scatter shot all their projections all over it just like what she was saying about the sex stuff or the whatever stuff you know well, people are gonna do that well it's like but it's, it's as smoke was saying earlier is, is like some people people write or do fan works and everything like that it's a cathartic measure they just put it out there and then they don't ever look at it i'm one of those people i write some stuff i travel i do a little the one one shot thing maybe a continuous story i post it somewhere don't ever look at the comments I look to see if maybe there's any good critique for my writing, and then I move on to something else. I don't get abs absorbed and obsessed with my own ego, but there are people who inevitably they they need the the worship and the validation, and that's where it becomes frightening. It should be uh, it should be as cool as me. Then you uh, then you'll obsess about your own work just because it'll be good. No. <laughs> Cool. No, I, I'm I'm too busy doing new shit. Fuck you. I'm cool. No, no, that, no. That's what, that's the actual attitude you should have. Because it's like, <laughs> if if you are resting on your laurels, then you're you're not you know you're not evolving. Give me a call when you start. Oh, I'm gonna evolve into a butterfly after this. So. I'm, I I'm with it. Me too. I am gonna evolve into a beautiful butterfly from this video. <laughs> well, I will evolve into the Uber Mensch. The the Uber Butterfly Mensch. <laughs> exactly. This is your world. We ask why do people have such volatile reactions? Because this means everything to them. Yeah, and it, when someone contradicts oh God, your that's world, sad. 
Yeah, and if someone <clears throat> breaks your world down with logic and reason and evidence, maybe your world wasn't as strong as you thought. Maybe you need to rethink your life or your fandom at least. <laughs> you want to go home and rethink your life. <laughs> yeah, but dang it, you, you don't want to buy it. It's just not the same thing. <laughs> uh, see, we're toxic fans. It's our whole life. We can't think of anything except for Star Wars metaphors. That's right. I can think of Lord of the Rings metaphors too, but there's no, there's really not a lot of mind control going on in the movie. Um, really? Like, people like myself, we get into fandom, we pour our whole souls into that space. I think your soul is going into love, the armrest of your time, chair. Ourselves. Message coming in. And so, Patching it through. You know, you see well, don't do that. To, you know, there's comfort. Just you want to it. preserve that comfort for your safe space. Message coming in. Ships, however you might Patching it through. This, she, she's just rambling now. She's talking about random ideas that aren't related, like safe spaces and I, shipping. Like, what are you talking about? Is there anything more to this video? I see we're at 16 out of 19. Know. Yeah, I'm almost but done. Isn't isn't that exactly the issue that pe people like her just do just completely and wholly let the person to be absorbed by that one thing, and then as soon as somebody comes in and smashes some things, they just completely lose hold of everything. I, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around what she's what she's getting at because she's jumping, and this is this is what you this is like talking to a woman. Here she is. She's not looking at someone in the face, so she has to imagine someone that she's trying to share something with. And you're sitting there going, oh, God, is she going to keep talking? Still? Is she going to stop? Glib, Glib I got a question for you guys. Do you guys yeah. ever review anybody who's, how do I say this nicely, coherent? Like that they have actually... <laughs> I don't know. know. <laughs> that, that's up to Smudcast to decide the... the the discord section yeah I they just, just keep sending us like this this clown show i don't know why they want to do this to us maybe they hate us it's a it's, it's a the toxicity of the fandom oh my god she's right message coming in <laughs> it's it, i mean i'm enjoying myself this is fun but it's just like this is uh, yeah the second time and i'm like it, they both have been incoherent nonsense there's yeah, no structure to this the video, video has 360,000 views from last year okay so obviously she's resonating with someone she has a patreon i don't know maybe they're coming in from reddit or something but her latest video on her channel which is a month old got 1.1 million views so she's obviously doing something right what is her latest video? Let's go find it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I got a whole bunch of super chats to catch up with, so I do apologize. Uh, Tigger six ten. Heard of Darling Message in the Franks? In. Subtle. It is not. Uh, I have heard of it. I've never watched it. So there's lots it of anime was... I've heard of. I've never actually watched because I just don't. It doesn't appeal to me for whatever reason. Uh, I've I've heard of I've watched Trigger's other works. Apparently, this one was the the weakest of their entries. It had a very uh, Contentious ending. Oh, no, I'll leave it at that. Apparently, a lot of anime does not end well. That's true. So I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't tend to. I don't tend to watch anime for the purpose of the ending because that's usually not the case. It usually doesn't. Yeah. It either doesn't end or they just go. Eh, it's finished. I don't know. I've I've seen some good stuff. Aero Proxy, Dark in the Black, uh, Monster. Monster was a great one. Monster Long, is but... the best, but that's the exception to the rule because it's number one. But... I only watch the exceptions. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> uh, Dollface, hey, how's it going? Thank you. If by act like Commander Shepard you mean punching journalists in the face, well, that's if they're nagging you all the time every year. Renegade Shep. Oh, God, yeah. Renegade Shep would not take crap from anyone. <laughs> is, Ren is there any other way to play Shepard? Let's be honest. Uh, Playing Shepard as, as, a, as a paragon who's occasionally drunk. <laughs> you ever notice those in those games, though, especially Bioware, virtuous options basically mean that you skip game content or, uh, or that you do more game content, but then the dick option means that you're going to skip it inevitably because you just That's do the dark in. side path and you just basically That's do a shortcut. The problem is it's because a frustrating of, sometimes. Because it's like, I want to be an asshole, but I still want more content. Yeah, the way they designed it was that everyone wins. So if you're pure Paragon or pure Renegade, you always get some degree of content and you always win. Um, there was very little customization in terms of, let's say, your class. There was that one uh, event, the uh, trigger event in uh, 
the DLC, Omega DLC, if you're if you happen one of the five percent of players who played as an engineer, and you happen to hit the Paragon trigger, you can fix the problem with the the console, or whatever the hell it was. Out of all the series, that's the only time I saw it. A class based Paragon interrupt. So yeah, everything else is the same. Sadly. Anyway. Uh, Joe, Joe Crazy. Uh, a lot more tokusatsu is starting to make its way over in the West. Some Kamen Rider and even Garo is now available. If you don't know what toku, tokusatsu, it's pretty much watching Power Rangers. But uh, Oh, yeah. I love that stuff. But um, Garo, if it just had a slightly Garo, bigger right? budget, it'd be awesome. Yeah, and less with the animal imagery. I think there's too many. Yeah, yeah. Too many birds and lions and you know. Are they talking about are they talking about Garo like Garno Garo the vanishing line? Is that what they're speaking of when they say Garo out of curiosity? I, or is it a genre that I'm not? Probably a show. With? It's probably a show in the Tokusatsu. Uh or this the Satan. The I love Satan I love guy. all the martial arts and I love the posing. Yeah. I love it. Lots of lots of spandex, yeah. So a big fan of the first matrix is what you're telling me then. Oh okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Here's it was the second Matrix the one that really introduced some martial arts that's been so long since I watched them. Oh, God. I can't remember the second one very well. Yeah. I remember <sighs> the ending. Here is uh, Barry Bluebird. The creators of SU are terrible people in real life. What is SU? Steven Universe. Oh, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Steven! L- loud noises are comedy! Ugh. Everything's permissible. Still have not watched that show. Still probably won't. <laughs> uh, Wild Tanuki, how's it going? There's no worth left to this video. Save yourself the trouble and get on with it. I know we're almost done. She's she's dead. We're dead. It's you know it's pretty much a copacetic right. feeling. My friend sent me that. And he said this is what she looks like. Uh, <laughs> good old, good old <laughs> Scottish girl. Huh? Oh dear. Isn't that from Wild Thornberries or something? It's Probably. a Nickelodeon show. I remember yeah. that. Uh, something like that. Here's, Message coming in. Here's Bogues. Patching it through. Uh, she has, uh, oh, boobs and is quirky. That's enough for simps. Uh, y- y- you know what? Uh, sadly, Booba looba. Sadly, you're probably correct. But, uh, yeah, this, what a strange oh. video we're watching. Uh, Bogue again. Ultraman has an official YouTube with subs. Oh, cool. Ultraman's still around. That's awesome. Yeah. That's when I think of... Uh, what was that um, David Hayter uh, Guyver? I think that's within the subgenre of uh, Satan. <laughs> so, And he did two movies, which was awesome. Anyway. You don't want to see anything that might make you uncomfortable. I talked a lot about porn, but honestly, this can, you know, this can work for anything. You yeah, see, why, like, why was you porn your go to? You see someone attacking a creator or some such. Because sex sells. That's gonna because make I need the booty. It's related to fanfic. I, d- I do need the booty. Gotta harpoon them, but really, not give me the booty. Day, I think it's not morally wrong if I fantasize. Preservation of comfort. Blah, 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 blah. We have, you know, totally latched ourselves onto these properties. We define ourselves by these properties. Oh, my God. Do you define yourself? Ba- I know Shiny does, but that's because he loves Star Wars to death. So, <laughs> And everything else is anathema to it. It's kind of like, Shiny, you want to talk about fantasy? No. <laughs> it's like, okay, bye. I want to talk Where about is- Star Wars. Where is Shiny anyway? <laughs> probably doing homework. Yeah, he's probably busy oh. you know, finishing up his assignments. So uh, he's in the Star Wars. Four days universe. till Christmas. Why is he doing assignments? Uh, England. Yeah, bloody England. He was. Oh God, that's right. Uh, he was in that, that country. I remember now. So when you yeah, depending when you on how, England, depending on how it works. There is no there is no British dream where where you live in England, <laughs> work until you're dead. Oh yes, that's why it's such a pleasant country. So you could move to America. Is that is that the dream? Get yep. the, get the in America, the dream is you work until you're 65, and then you can go to hell in Florida. Our, oh. our, our fates are grim, and we face it grimly. <laughs> by, by really cheap <laughs> with the, real estate. With a cup of tea? <laughs> yes, of course. 
buy really cheap real estate in Florida and hope it doesn't get knocked over by the next typhoon or whatever comes barreling its way. Ah, oh, boy. Anyway, we got still three minutes. I thought we had less. Oh, crap. Let's go. Let's power through this. We can do it. Attacks. That it's actually less than three minutes. Or it's like your two minutes. Of that property. Or attacks. So, I don't know, floods your dashboard with things that make you feel uncomfortable. That doesn't feel like some peripheral thing. That feels like an attack against yourself. Oh my God. What? Are you serious? Are this you really serious? does feel like a therapy session. This is retarded. <laughs> At this point, she, it really does feel she, like it's it's her working out her she's issues. A, she's, admitting, on a video yeah, she, she's admitting to having a YouTube channel and people are attacking her because the comments are mean. That's the thing. Like, will push her over. I've seen I've seen actual so like through the craziness of these of the couple of podcasts I now watch, I've seen people as hack each other with full on videos and essays. I, I have comments should not phase you at this point. Oh yeah, <laughs> people who will actually devote their entire fan bases message coming to in. uh to going on and Passion like stalking through. you on Twitter and everything. I, I am I am currently. And I assume the most level headed people just shrug that off. Oh, I'm. They're like, I'm, yeah, you made a mean video about me. Who cares? Yeah, I'm currently. <laughs> I'm currently being attacked for my book uh, by this guy called Sheep in the Box. He's done about five videos on it so far. Oh, Sheep yeah, that's box. right. <laughs> I, I actually I, I started to watch some of it. It was, uh, it was pretty dumb. It was hard. Oh, it reminds me at some point uh, at some point I should read that book. Oh, yeah. I, so actually, that's a good point, though. Smud, he, he attacks you. Right. Do you feel that your existence is now invalidated? No, I'm, yes. I'm actually... Uh, Laughing is his technique of, of uh, reading a book with another person line by line and pausing on every sentence the same way we might do this in a video with what we're doing now and, and think that's a, a good form of reading a book and understanding a book. It is, it is a manual on how to write. And it, you, like, what does this mean? What does he actually say? It's like, why don't you ask me if you have all these questions? Just write, write me a big email. I'll be happy to get back to you. But instead, you act like a, a goofball. And, the, uh, the, I'd like to point out the fact, though, that he says that, but he also said that he wasn't obsessing about you and he wasn't going to cover you anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I, saw, I actually saw that videos, But he's made two videos since then. And, and also, he doesn't mean what he says, but he also percent and stands by it. Oh, no, that's, that's, a, that's a classic one right there. It's like, you know... This is just my opinion. Uh, I don't really mean this, but you, you're not really. I stand a by what I say. Yeah, I, I stand by what I say. I, I was yeah, just kidding. Yeah, come on, come I was on kidding, my. Uh, but I stand by what I say. Come on, my live stream, you idiot. That's yeah, a great way to to get people to come on your live stream. It's fantastic. So, yeah, you, you have to pick who you want to talk to, who you want to make friends with, and I love talking to people who challenge my my suggestions and ideas and, and what have you. I'm actually writing another book, but you know, these things come about for reasons. We don't just go, oh, yeah, this, this person is worth my time. It's like, no, 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 I know who's not worth my time. I choose not to listen to them because I know their arguments are useless. We've heard them plenty of times before. And we say, okay, let's focus on something more productive. And yet Smud has me on his show. Can you believe it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Despite all of that. We, we have to have the cowboy somewhere on the show. We can't, we can't just... <laughs> He's not a cowboy. He's not wearing the hat anymore. Well... You say that, but I'm, my hat is in the mail. I bought a hat. I finally, I have the whole, the whole setup. I just, I need a vest, but I, I have the poncho. Um, yeah. I have the handkerchief, and I have the hat now. You are the definition of a Hollywood cowboy. So you're, I'm a you're Hollywood invalid. cowboy. You're invalid. You need to come to the great state of Texas. My horse is two dimensional and, <laughs> and is made out of a matte painting or CGI. I have a CGI horse. You know what? You'll have to give me your 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 recommendation of greatest cowboy movies. Oh, it's Once Upon a Time in the West is the number one in my book. Really? Um, oh. But that, but but saying that is only like based on the big epic cinematic thing. Obviously, you know, you can go down the list of like, di like the John Ford movies have a different feel than the spaghetti westerns, and they say different things. So uh, uh, maybe I'll cover them. I'm not. I don't really want to be a, a critic that much. I don't think I want to. I still want to make my own stuff. Uh, but I, I really enjoy discussing with other people. You know, like um, Smud and, and Literature Devil, who who also have like in they they do criticism of stuff that is obviously like partially social criticism for how the craft is bad right now. I like a critical drinker, I like that kind of stuff. But um, there's something so that's kind of soured for me um, about talking about other people's work, wherein 
when I want to make in. my own work as well. Passage which again <laughs> is why it's funny that Sheep in the Box is shitting so much on Smud's book because he literally did that. He's like, hmm, I want to teach, uh, I want to give people a handbook to write it. And then here you go. You can actually do something with that. What Sheep in the Box should do if he was a clever YouTuber is use all of Smud Boy's techniques in a book to prove him wrong. If Sheep in the, Bo Sheep in the Box wrote a book that used Smud's techniques and it came out badly and, and he had good ideas that he plugged into it, then he could talk shit about it. But he's not. He's just going to do, you know, the, he's going to EFAP a book, which is highly entertaining. I would be very flattered. Well, I tried for two minutes. I couldn't take it because it was <laughs> like you, you read a sentence and you stop. You're like, what does he mean by that? What, what, how could he possibly say it? It's like, what? It's, it's a manual. You, it says do X. If you don't want to do X, I, I can't help you. Like, I just I don't get it. This is how you make this, okay? <laughs> that's, that's basically what you're saying, right? I, it's practical. And there's some philosophy. Add but... sugar and and what does he mean? Add milk and flour. I, I he got it. I yeah. Like, I, 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 cake. I'm sure lots of people got confused with my food analogies because I use food so much, and uh, <laughs> you know, you just do that to make it easier. But it's okay. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's get back on track here. We only got one more minute. Uh, Mariner 1712 pray for shiny the UK apparently guys in the super COVID yeah I don't know the new strain which uh, <laughs> is just the it's same true. as the old strain I guess I don't the, know. Uh, the new strain be... of COVID COVID OG pick it up <laughs> at your local weed dispensary I'm just disappointed that we give us superpowers I was really praying that this is the X Factor you'd be yeah. funny it's though actually... black people they're getting their superpowers today well, yeah. <laughs> you'd be great be I, I saw that you would be great I if... saw that <laughs> If we'll the get new... COVID cherry, COVID oh, diet, no. COVID zero. COVID deluxe coming soon, dude. What about, <laughs> what about COVID vanilla cherry? We need that. That's when you COVID know you light. Well, Oh, if... man. COVID classic was good. When they tried new COVID, it just didn't taste the same. What if there's a whole bunch they'll, they'll of... They'll go back to COVID classic in what? like a year's time and make millions. What, what yeah, if when they yeah, took all the color out of it. There's going to be a, a riot over the new COVID, though. Message coming be, in. Like, this taste sucks. It's not Patch great. It Go back to the old formula. Well, what if, what if the... Because they're getting the new uh, vaccine, I think, earlier than the rest of Europe. What if that new vaccine doesn't work with the new COVID? And they're just constantly well, apparent, making... Apparently, oh. the vaccine supposedly breaks down the protein in the, um, in the actual virus cell, so it should work exactly the same regardless. It's really? supposed to function like, from what I heard, it's like an mRNA, like yeah. a messenger RNA or something like that. That's a, that's, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a doctor, but as far as I understand, Science that's is cool, works. As, as a doctor of journalism, I Hunter S. Thompson. I'm not taking that COVID <laughs> vaccine because I, you know, just just cough into my mouth instead. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Ah, it'll be fine. I I have this like horrible like sort of fantasy i guess or not fantasy just a idea what if the virus actually makes it worse i would love it let's go let's fucking go <laughs> I'm just like please don't it'd be such a cruel, cruel bring thing. the power I, I want all of the bring all of the virus <laughs> it's been such a great year all right here's tyler preston check out china's to tokusatsu film the super inframan for balls to the walls crazy fun and Merry Christmas. Well, thank you, Tyler. That's fantastic. I'm going to Google that right now. China's tokusatsu. Super Inframan. Super Inframan. Yeah, there's a, there's a great correlation between Japanese and, and Chinese mythology, so I'm assuming the uh, the modern takes on the superhero genre are also very similar. So, uh, Asia. Mariner, 1712 again. Cayman Rider Saber. Ooh has the main protagonist as a novelist. Uh-oh. I recommend it. A uh, neat blend of drama and fantasy with literature. Okay, that's... Uh, I mean, if you're going to write a story about a person writing a story who's also a superhero, I mean, why not? No no uh, self-identification there or self-insertion? Anyway, well, let's keep going. This is you. I'm going to say this as many times as I need to. This is about you now and your safe space. This is your fandom. And people what? are what? shitting all over it. So of course you're going to react. Of course yeah. you're going to be a is she drunk? Yeah. You are this property. So. No. Uh, no. What no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. No. She, she's like, people are shitting all over She starts off with a great premise. 
people are shitting on your on your thing and so you defend it yes because you are that fandom I'm like oh that's very interesting so if if the fandom is consisting of people and and you're saying that it's not the internet is not a safe space so people are defending canon as if it's their safe space and she's trying to work out a way that she can simultaneously be validated for or the people can have validated opinions on the canon that are different from what most people think while at the same time pr professing that it doesn't matter what they think which i think is the hypocritical part right it's like the best way i can describe this meme in a meme format is that do you know the episode of spongebob where the they they need to replace the dollar of mr krabs that they ruined and oh Patrick, yeah yeah Patrick yeah it into a vending machine <laughs> Spongebob's like yeah 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 grab the dollar grab the and then he puts it back and he's like no 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 and then it comes back out again and says, yeah 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 you're almost there grab it no 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 <laughs> yeah it's like okay yeah I understand that people people build a community around a fandom okay so what's the problem with that there, there's not where how do you how do you have a problem with people in, in the way that you describe a community, as in just a bunch of people, is really the problem. Sounds like sense. basic conflict res resolution stuff. To be perfectly honest, we all we all agree that these are the rules of uh, how this D and D game works according to this rule book. Here are the problems that we have, and then we argue about them because we want to improve it in the next edition. We want to be heard. Like, what what is the problem with that? Isn't that how things evolve? That isn't that how almost everything has worked. For problem. better or for worse. That's the way that it's worked. It Good. hasn't worked the other way. The issue is you're a rational human being and you actually want to have intelligent discussions. Yay! Stop it, Clip. Stop it. Yeah, but this is the... I am the... I am the fandom. The... I am. No! The regional governors will now have direct control over their fandoms. I am the Star Wars now. I must defend it. See, you were making fun of Shiny for it, and you're, now you're turning everything into a Star Wars meme. I have to because I am the fandom, right? Isn't that what she said? Yeah. Well, my entire my identity is. Yeah. Based on the this this is the maturity and of that's a child. Why we're, who, we're in a community of the fandom. Who but like? What if I'm the fandom too? We're the fandom menace. That, that we know that. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of the attachment a child would have to like Batman or or Superman and dressing up as Halloween and really connecting with the character and, and liking the character, and then growing up into an adult and going. I still feel exactly the same way and I still have the same sensibilities as a child as opposed to saying now I'm an adult and I understand people have differing opinions and instead of accepting that you just say why this is my thing you can't say <laughs> bad things about my th it's like whoa wait, wait, wait a second you're an adult aren't you you're writing fan fiction for God's sakes you understand what that means there's something being unfulfilled that you want to fulfill you want to create something but you're not smart enough to do your own thing so you're finding something you've identified with and connected with, and now people are calling that silly. So you either stop listening to those people and do it and keep making your thing, or you move on. You don't go, aw, people are making fun of me for my thing. And I find that strange because you should have the logic should have connected rather quickly. What do you do with your life at that point? What are my options? Not like I've how, how many fandoms have you had to give, up, give up because they've trashed it recently? Like, I'm not really a Star Wars fan anymore. I'm not really uh, a 40K fan anymore. Not of the current generation. Not really of World of Warcraft or any of the things that I liked when I was younger. So I just kind of gave up on it and wanted to go create my own thing and enjoy new things and explore what else is out there. Isn't yeah. that the healthy way of going about it? Yeah, I would also just say, like, I don't know. Like, I didn't give up on Star Wars. I just, I like the old stuff. I don't really care for the new crap. Well, that's not what I'm saying. When I say give up, I mean, like, you just stop. You, so, like, oh, when you you're... Oh, you stop getting enthused about, like, the newest release and everything. You just stop paying attention. You go back, you yeah. go, all right, I still like the movies. I'll play some of the game that I like or whatever, but I'm not going to, like, get all hype about it. I'm not, I'm not going to, like, try and defend it and, and argue about why I think it's still gonna it's it's still good you guys it's still good or <laughs> or try and fight to make it better because i at this point i don't i mean i'll talk about it right like and say this is how it could be better but i'm not gonna be like yeah let's go everybody let's let's save it because i know the people that own it are not interested in that conversation in the slightest right so mm -hmm. i'm not I, I don't feel any connection to it that's I, I found it so interesting i never really ever in my life got into that mindset of you know quote unquote fandom i was just always like yeah i enjoy it and then when it wasn't you know, good anymore right. wasn't my taste anymore. It's like, oh, move on. Right. 
Like, yeah, exactly. I my thing has always just been like, you know, just a little bit of frustration. I'll be like, well, I'm I'm annoyed by this, and then I'll be like, what else is on TV? Oh. Well, for me, only if they royally, fu- <laughs> you know, for me, if they only just drastically change, you know, if, or they royally fuck it up, then I'm like, oh, that's kind of shit. But then I move on because I'm like, well, why should I be mad at it? I mean, it's shit. So the, the yeah. interesting thing is, is I would say is, is like, yeah, uh, like Globe was saying, it's it's interesting to discuss like something like maybe why it fails because then it's like a good exactly, thing yeah, it's a good thing for your own writing endeavors because you'll be like, what did they do and how can I avoid that? That bit? yeah. And it's also a good way writing. to find new stuff. Sorry to interrupt, but it's just like when chat chimes in or when somebody on the on the in the community or on a forum or something goes, Hey, you know, this thing, check out this thing, and then you go, Oh, I like that thing, and then the, and then people kind of have a discussion about yeah, it. That like, was the whole man. point. Yeah, thanks, man. You rec- you turned me on something that's actually better than what I like previously. Imagine it's all about that. connections. By the way, just just shortly, since you mentioned 40k, I can highly recommend Arch Arch series on the Siege of Vrax. Really yeah, good of stuff. course. Can you course. say that again in, in your German voice? What? <laughs> it just sounded really interesting the way you said it. Arch, what was it? Arch, Arch uh, formerly Arch Warhammer, his series on the Siege of Vrax. Vrax. Uh, Vra- See, that's, Vrax. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Glib. I'm glad you caught that. It sounds like you should have some like Prussian glory <laughs> behind it when you're saying that. Uh, no, the German R is actually much, is much different pronounced to the way Swiss pronounced the R. Right, right. But I'm, you know what I mean. I mean, this should just be whole yeah. like marching music. Vrax. Vrax. You guys are in sync. That's awesome. Yeah, just, just yes. don't start singing a <laughs> national anthem. That'd be fine. We're, we're okay. <laughs> Start singing the Swiss national anthem to <laughs> the, <laughs> and then Arch is Arch can come in in the background and start just blustering All nationalism about the war. Is bad, remember? No, oh, no. Oh wait, we have two minutes. Oh, why did I say one minute before? What the hell? I can't. can't well, we read. it's it's less than two minutes, so it's. No. Right? Yeah, who's gonna chat? Like the best thing we can do is try to enforce within ourselves. This is so balance. awkward. You can make a change. No, just damn mm-hmm. it, won't you? That's all you really can do Thank because this now. behavior that I've listed up till now has been horribly normalized. What? The more so many young kids. What has been normalized? Be- behavior has been normalized. <laughs> all these words. <laughs> Safe spaces. Safe spaces. Only one room big. Ah, okay. I think she might mean the shitting all over her safe space has been normalized. Oh, good. You mean c- people saying crap on on the internet has been normalized? Uh, okay. <laughs> people I think it started out that now. way. <laughs> it's never stopped. You used, to, you used to actually have to go to you had to used to go to a public forum for that to a bar to say crap about them. Oh now you can do it God. from the comfort of your own home with the ISB internet connection. I could buy uh, 24 cases and uh, be in my pajamas. It's great. The horror. The oh. horror. These spaces and being taught that this is how you react when things go wrong or you think that something has gone wrong. Well, why hasn't it? So you can't undo, I think, years worth of damage in that regard what? all at once. I think we can slowly but surely take care of ourselves. And you know where we can maybe do a little bit of damage control. Oh my! You know, be positive. I, I told you this is a therapy together. session. This is but insane. It's, that's what this has turned into. Fights. That's all you can really do. It's self-help Sorry, by the syndrome. Shit. Fandom spaces are echo chambers. What? What a. What a bitch. I'm sorry, but if you're bitching <laughs> about your fandom, oh, there's, there's mean people in it, and the world is crappy because the mean people... It's like, are you for real? You found a passion that some people have a differing perspective than you do. Oh, and, no. And suddenly the <laughs> world the is crap. Like, what, are, you, are you insane? That's like saying, I like steak. I like ribeye steak. No, no, no. No, no, no. Tenderloin. <laughs> Tenderloin. How I, dare you? I, I can't you. believe my boyfriend likes Burger King when we know that it's a McDonald's family, okay? These people are toxic. They just As can't I handle the burger A McDonald's family. <laughs> As I said before, she will be pushed over by a light breeze. Yeah. 
It's like this amazing thing that's not perfect in everyone's opinion when I share it with them is is a, making the world a horrible place. It's like, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in your life, ma'am? Like, what is your priority? She identifies with her fandom. This is not a good thing, okay? Yeah. Does she identify as her fandom? What are her pronouns? Oh. I just feel bad. <laughs> I, I feel bad because it's just like, I feel like we're going in circles. Like this, what she just went through was what we just went through in the other part of the video, but now she's just sitting there. Like, oh, oh, I, I said, I think of like eight minutes and this is going to be a circular video or it is turning into one. As long as we keep enforcing, you know, nah. the kind of behavior that, you know, Enforcing? Who's enforcing people to bitch at other people online? They just <laughs> <laughs> Steve. The police, police knocks. Police knocks at my door. Hey, stop bitching. Glib, you're not you're not loud enough on this mudcat. What's your problem? Okay. <laughs> where's Where's the American uh, various terms? I don't know. <laughs> you have to say them. Okay. <coughs> Keep bashing people who are not like you. Oh, okay. Telling each other to kill themselves because they perceive what? any like you know uncomfortable thing as a threat to their person. Well, what, what are we saying oh, right now? <laughs> That's the question of the hour, know, my buddy, so my dude. For this video, aren't I? I, I have no idea what she just said. I see he's caring. Wow. It just ends. It just ends. It's just like that. Ah, done. Bye. -bye. <laughs> what? What was that? I have no idea what she said. She just sort of rambled, slouched in a chair. There's no I guess. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> by the end of it, it was incoherent. She couldn't even put the credits in her video. I'm a little disappointed by that. <laughs> Whatever the song was. If you don't understand, she's sad. People are mean to her in her fandom. Are we still well, live, by the way? Or... Yeah, we're still live. You sound like you're dying, though. Yeah, we're still oh, alive. Oh, no, I, I, I always sound like that. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm not a voice oh, in the radio. So are you always dying? Yeah, pretty much. What, <laughs> we're you? always dying. Yeah, that's, that is true. We are always pro progressing to a state of death. Mm. Okay, that was... Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that was dark even for me. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, she's uh, she's a bit sensitive. I think a bit too sensitive about. Uh... Well, <laughs> how come you true. think that? Again, critical thinking discussion. Uh, just trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work in storytelling. That that's Message those are good in. and positive things. Patch it through. She seems to be advocating. By the way. Did she use the word toxic more than once? Uh, I don't think so. I think she just more used than, it one time. I, I think in her in her little rant here, she might have used it once. I don't recall. But she said it once at least, yeah. Also, uh, can anyone answer the question why fandoms are toxic? Well, no. Because they hate you and you take it personally. That's the only thing we understood. Which is... I don't know. That's like one part of like a 20 part puzzle that she didn't even talk about. She just completely reacted to people's uh, differing opinions and thinks it's the worst thing in the world. I'm like, that's here. Here is the trigger pulling the, here's the gun and the, someone's pulling the trigger. That's horrible. It's like, uh, why are they pulling the trigger? Why is it loaded with that kind of ammunition? Why are they firing at you? Why are you a target? Why are you making yourself a target? Like there's, there's like all these steps she didn't even address concerning the concept the concept that fandoms are somehow bad or good or whatever I, it's, her, she's, she had this cathartic video for herself and everyone loves it because it's a oh look at me I'm I'm attacked by we don't know who but someone <clears throat> attacked her enough to enough to make a video well, no we do we know who it was the there was there was a comment remember at the beginning of the movie the, the one movie. comment <laughs> oh my god it was me all along <laughs> it was me Dio. it was it was the beginning of the video don't you remember it was one comment yeah. one lone oh yeah right she had that one comment up 
that one Tumblr comment to be precise. Well, pro tip for any aspiring YouTubers listening: look at what you did and just don't do it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just don't do what what that was. Yeah, let, let's try and call it a night because that was that was kind of sad. Uh, Mike, yeah. Mike Tesla. Uh, uh, even nationalism in socialism. Wink, wink. She cripple. What? I wait. What? I. I uh, yeah, I think we we lost the plot there. What was what was happening? We we spoke about four minutes ago. Even... I made an allusion to Angela Merkel statement that all nationalism is bad. I and then it was right after uh, we had the whole rock thing, and then Clips yeah, oh. the clip saying it was Prussian, and then I think that was the connection. I'm I'm reaching my brain. It feels like hours ago when reality is probably only like ten minutes ago. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Joe Crazy, uh, the heck she on about? Uh, we're not exactly sure, but I think we understood that her views were so extreme, people didn't like them, and I guess she she personally removed herself from a, a Facebook group or whatever, and she felt bad because she wanted a safe space, which was her fandom. And uh, that didn't work out for her, I guess. Oh, okay. That actually brings a little context into the video then. So is this kind of like an apology letter, I guess, or like a meet me halfway kind of thing? No, no, no. But that's that's the general idea I think she experienced because she was talking about safe spaces at the beginning and how people have different views. Then she went into sex because that's an extreme view of of fanfic. (laughs) I don't know. Just talking about it just reminds me of this scene in the uh, It, uh, Stephen King's It miniseries. Why is it so mean? Oh, really? Why does it hate? <laughs> it seems kind of to be her video. Makes me think of the Leave Britney Alone. She's a human meme. No, oh, that, <laughs> that was the Tim Curry one, I think. Oh, right. Who made it? I just know the. I just know it's some long haired dude. Crying into the yeah. I don't remember if Tim Curry. I don't know the name, Smud. I just know the memes. Oh, okay. Anyway, um, geez, that was tough, but uh, we got through it. Wasn't that bad? Wasn't that crazy? Just a little hard to grasp and a little ranty, which uh, I don't know. These people, it's if like they failed to take, get a degree that involved critical thinking in, in university and they just sort of went off and made YouTube videos about them ranting. They, they, they failed you to can, reach a degree of critical thinking. I'm just going to yeah. say, you can you can critical think without a, de- a degree. I just... <laughs> Fail every exam. <laughs> like what? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have a, I, I don't have a degree yet, but I mean, my, my critical thinking came from my job as, as an analyst right. in the military. Like that's... That's crazy. Yeah, well, well, now you've been in the military, so that's a that's a sort of degree of time, my, isn't it? I mean, I've I been to my, uni and I tried hard to erode my critical thinking. I guess <laughs> my I guess my it, point is is that you can critical think without without necessarily a, without formal training or education behind it. You just have to be able to reason your way through and connect dots. My but but, was, but you you mentioning your military thing as a as a point uh, in favor of your education, actually, I would say is is confirming what Smud is saying, which is that. Yeah. There's the authoritative sense of success that comes from a program of thinking that has shown yeah. to functionally work and is proven by people that have done it themselves and that kind of stuff. That's that's has incredible value. What doesn't have a lot of value is somebody sitting sideways on their couch complaining about the fandom. Yeah, it just doesn't agree. work like that. Indeed, I, I don't I don't disagree with that last point. Spitting I mean, maybe that person. Here. Sorry, I was saying maybe somebody that, you know, the, the creator of the show or whatever can sit sideways and wax poetically about their creation. But if we're all just analyzing on, kind of on equal ground on this platform and we're trying to bring credentials and we're trying to bring some kind of qualifications to the table, then it really does help to have an experience. Yeah. And that's all. Huh. And any, any life experience with a proficiency in something is going to help with a proficiency in another. And learning the format of the specific thing helps enormously. That I would agree with. I, I guess my, my only just my only contextual point is it doesn't deserve to be part of formalized training. That that's that's mm-hmm. the only thing. Experience I, in life in life or in a profession. As definitely. somebody with no degree at all and has just kind of worked in the business, it hasn't necessarily filled the gap that a, a good formal education with that kind of 
training w- would have. So that's why I've been grateful every time that I've taken a class with, by somebody that was um, that knew what they were talking about. In form- like it helped me enormously, especially with writing. But, I know um, what you mean. At the same time, so, you can you can analyze something, and y- you know what I mean. You can analyze something. I would also, as long as you can figure out the the concepts, then you can have a, a lot of points uh, for yeah. something. So, I mean, I also would say you, you know you don't necessarily have to quote unquote have a degree to have had some stuff like that. Of course, I, I think it's the yeah, the hardships of breaking down your feelings and emotions or, or your reaction to things as opposed to looking at facts and going, I don't I don't agree with these facts. And it has a sense of maturity because you say, oh, I can I can disconnect my emotions from my logic and say, okay, people have differing opinions. Wow, what a concept. And some of those opinions might actually be contrary. So when you go through the steps of trying to get your essay marked or graded or edited, people will give you feedback and say, oh, wow, I like, screwed up here and this is probably smart or, or stupid or maybe the, other, the critic is wrong, maybe the editor is wrong. Like it, it gives you these insights into your ideas. And for someone to not have that going through school or whatever in life, you skip that in school. Yeah. You, like it's, it's very childish. It's almost grade schoolish that you've never encountered something like that. So she's brave enough to go in front of a camera and, and espouse her feelings, but she's not smart enough to sit down and think things through, which is, I, I don't know. I mean, that's probably just the personality type maybe, but it, I think it's something that most adults would have gone through in almost every walk of life, even if you're just a performer on a on a stage uh, singing or like that takes discipline. So if, if it takes discipline, you've, you've structured your lifestyle to be mm. emotionally competent already so that if someone says, oh, you suck or whatever, it's like, doesn't matter. I know what I'm doing. And in this case, someone said that to her and it made her stop and go, wait a sec. I got to talk about this. My whole life was a lie. I, <laughs> my whole, my whole fandom was a lie. Apparently I am the fandom. Yeah. <laughs> it is mine to defend. Oh dear. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think that's all guys. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, everyone in chat, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in this this week of Christmas, this wonderful week of quiet, lonesome, cool, and collected, small family gathering <laughs> Christmas. I was about to say we were going down a darker road there. For a- yeah, I know, but that's that's how it is. It's just going to get more uh, isolationist as we go by the months until we get our, our Pfizer vaccine as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Or whatever it's going to be. What, uh, yeah, there's so much. There's probably going to have like 20 solutions in the next two weeks or something. Get the new Samsung vaccine <laughs> yeah. DLC. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to come with a cool case? Com- yeah. yeah, it comes with wireless headphones, dude. Whoa. <laughs> you can pre order your vaccine here. Yeah, it comes pre-order with. Pre order your vaccine now. It's going to come with. Supplies are limited. <laughs> it's going to come with the wireless app, so you download the vaccine and the app. And it's going to tell you who's around you. It doesn't have it, so you can avoid it. <laughs> you can bump them. Well, uh, download the sign of the devil now. What is it? The the mark the mark of the beast today <laughs> on the app store. Well, there is an actual app, and I don't know if you guys heard about it, but you can download the COVID app, which tells you who around you does not have the app because they have... Uh, yeah, that. They're, they're- there has been a government-sponsored COVID app over here, and I just, until today, refused to download and use it. Lib, do we have oh, yeah. something like that in the States? Because I've never heard of anything like that. What? <laughs> Which? A COVID app? Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of COVID. I get alerts all the time from the LA County Health Department that wants me to install their app or whatever, or the California. Talk I don't know them. who it is. Yeah, oh, I know. Hey, I don't do oh, that. I haven't got a single thing, and I'm in uh, either in Texas or Iowa. That's crazy well that's tech big tech really really wants to be the social credit system like for the ccp and it's yeah, really it, disgusting and nobody should endorse it everybody should go alt tech and uh that just takes breaking habits it's and and the habits are bad anyway oh, i gotta check youtube i gotta check youtube uh and then like never checking bit shoot you know what i mean never going to uh rumble or d live or whatever whatever the other yeah. sources are for information uh we, we just got to do that but there's you know there's not that many of us just got to keep up the good fight. All right. Um, okay, guys. If uh, you have any suggestions for videos we can cover, 
we have a f at least four uh, large lists on Discord. I might be making a fifth just because I have to go through like 30 more videos from you guys. So uh, keep them coming. Uh, always nice to vote on them every day. Uh, I'll be refreshing the list tonight, so if you want to come in tomorrow morning and check the Discord and vote on that, that'd be great. But, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you real soon, and hopefully you guys will be nice and healthy tomorrow as well so we can have this discussion again. Fantastic. All right. Good night, everybody.